the lasso and Berserkers. Yeah, they're not. Berserkers are like, was like the best in... Oh, Juggernaut gets banned. All right, so it's carry to carry matchup coming out here from the, the two sides. Who's in the pool? Terry. What? It's Kata's awesome. 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 just shot on the best of the left. They jump directly on the Tola. They want to take away the bunker first. Awesome. They succeed. Will this enchant just be able to get herself out? She's running. It's Frank Domain. She's still jumping out. She's cool. Gucci. Not jumping back in onto Queen Pay. But even with the big B, realizing that maybe not the best place to be right now. Honestly, Holy Grail, we forced out a buyback controller, a BKB charge from the Morphling. We are winning this fight. That's why Supernova are smoking in onto them. They want to try and find something. They don't win what they've given up. But they find nothing like cost. Holy Grail, get what they want. They retreat. Don't lose anything in the process. Early KB from Dong. I guess that you have a shard, so you can get shift off even if you get stunned also having a refresher uh, wasn't too afraid to pop it and as you said no uh, supernova they want to be fighting immediately they smoked out to find anything three smokes in a row wow like in the last minute from holy grail okay let's see where this one goes hey with this one roshan not that one Twenty-five. Yeah. Nah, he's massive. Think on five K gold as well. Alchemist oh, only level twenty-four. Definitely love Double to have that. Scanning. Twenty-five. And that extra moves. Either an elk. Radiance middle tower is under attack. I scan high under the tier. The uh, Roshan pit. Not gonna find anybody. Obviously, Road which is now up. All teams should be aware of it. See now by the beast monsters. Summer tripping up the sun. His blink has been disabled though, so he forced to spend it onto a BKB Han. Primal Roar was thrown onto this Enchantress. They don't have the damage to kill her off just yet. Gone trying to get into the fight at the same time though, Summer is getting ran down by Dong and Chen. Way from in the Morphling with the attack of strike. Gonna be good enough to kill Summer. You mentioned in the last fight, Lacoste, this time he does buy back. He realizes the importance of this Roche, and they are still fighting here. Kong goes forward, finds SJ, Sonic Wave, lands on to all five heroes to try to put them back. But sadly, the Morphling damage is a bit too much. Lich ends up dead, without buyback available. So now they have to contest for 4v5. Well, I don't think they will. Summer is on a different side of the map. He's farming for now. Supernova using this opportunity because Gun showed on the mid lane as Queen of Pain, pushing out that wave. So they initiate, they get to like one kill instantly. And as soon as Gun connects onto this Alchemist, who doesn't succeed, like he's not speed enough, getting slowed by Scotty. Dong, man, he has time of his life in this first game of this series. 9 0 and 3 and Morphling didn't die a single time. I just want to see the damage numbers that he's dealt in this game. That's honestly out of this world. How yeah, much he's been putting onto enemy? 55, 60,000 damage, I would say. Wow, crazy, crazy, crazy stuff coming in from him. And he's so, doing this without eggs, right? So even when he is dealing the you know, pain from every fight, but even without the eggs, just raw right click damage and scream of pain is doing all the work. Being more notable, he can lock onto the target with blink waveform so easily. Okay, gold lead doesn't mean anything at this point, but looks nice on the screen. Like, well, yeah, this team is winning. They have network advantage. There's a lot of unspent gold on the sides. I see Bounty with over 6,000 gold, 5,000 on Enchantress, 4K on Morph, and 6K on Konka. Oh, that's a lot of gold that it's not being spent on items, while on Radiant's side, yeah, they also have a decent amount of gold that is not spent. So mm -hmm. this number at the top could be deceiving. It's like 50k gold feet of unspent gold. And if the enemy team invests everything for now, they're keeping some of the buybacks. Problem is Summer uses buyback. Mm -hmm. Maybe both of these teams have gotten wind of Summer's a certain recession happening in China. They're keeping their cash on hand, saving for a rainy day. I don't think that big item on holding is going to change things. Beast Master, he kind of hit his peak. There's Hex, so this instant initiation against Morphin could be the same, but again, for now, Morphin's been dominating the 
Look at those people that put them in the bunker and keeps them alive. Sonic Wave came in, but now Moby is back better. down. He wants the revenge. He's going into the fight, right clicking down off the Jolem, forcing away the piece with his PTB. Radiant Scott. Work throwing in these shadow checks. And it's gonna be a bit of a problem. Then another star thrown in by Summer onto the bounty. Let's get forced off the way. Supernova have been on point with their supports. The four stars uses this. Uh, I messed up the combo a little bit. He was supposed to X onto the Undying to put it back, but he can't. So Chola's not here. This, is, this actually might have been the best. Never. Don is going and he wants to take these barracks out. Like we see the power of the they get it on, but man, the shift off and the inside the bunker, it's a huge damage for more than that now. Not about getting chipped, he's just getting right now. Now a fire. He ends up dead, force of power. Split ice fire as well. Primal Rosa goes out onto our flank, forced off in the wrong direction. So this time they do end up taking on his first line. Chola is too much here for the fight. So he comes in, crushes him onto two cores. I need to get the hell out of here. Sonic Wave is going to be back online. It's not going to do all that much. Um, he's the big bad one at the fight. His DTB is finished, but he's not going to be able to beat that though. Cape of Optino picks up on Chief. The support to die off. Gun is doing way too much work. And SJ also not behind the chain from Hunter Song. The Morphling is running out of mana. He needs to run the hell away. Can they catch him? He him with the sun. He fuels the crown. Silence by kill or triple kill for Gun. Base defense for Holy Grail. Somehow, some way, the cost of this game is still going. Game one is basher, thriller. Everything is happening in this instance. Yeah, this is what I want to see from this game. You know, just pure chaos. You don't know who's going to win for 50 minutes. And uh, look at what Kato Fane bought. He bought the second Metro Hammer. I think this tells a lot about how chaotic it is. <laughs> but sells it and. BKB. No bombs. If you manage to buy back and take these heroes out. A dying doesn't have one for 50 seconds. A long, this is a long minute for them. They could make it for tier and force a buyback out of long. Made a need for such a play by buyback himself. I don't want to do it. Even you'll have to use it anyway. Stuck getting taken away here. He's under attack. Against the base before really fast. Losing versus Alchemist Beastmaster. Yeah, also there's a lot of real estate in a hurry. There are 50 minutes into the game. You lose one fight. They're gonna shred through your barracks. So, full set of barracks. Now. Their buybacks to reset summer needs another two minutes. Can't afford to die right now. Oh, There's an iron buyback. Is there a smoke on Supernova? Pick up smoke and go for Alchemist. Hmm. Right, right, okay, last fight. Yeah. You know, Warflame has great against the other wins. Large part of that win is going to come out to Alchemist. In that last fight, you're winning to hype up SJ. This Lich played out of the freaking mind that engagement. Did everything yeah. see that him. Crazy chain for us. Really good since the game. Good shield as well. Oh, 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 I think, yeah, everybody on side of Supernode does have charred upgrade. Let's go. They're smoking up, but unfortunately, they have nobody. Holy Grail. Safely ensconced into their base. Um, okay. He's going to be the one so poking his head out, seeing what's up. Nobody should end up dead here. If this has been this game one, it's been top piece of the. Been top for us, can only imagine what it's like being in this game right now. So much stress. Yeah, that's not one of those games where it can't swim both ways. And it was like that. Like the craft going back and forth pretty much. Just super know if they've been in the charge of the early game. And they lost the lead again, gained the lead. And is this fourth or fifth Roche? Respawn. It's fourth. It's fourth. I think that's fourth. You know, I agree on it. Just made <laughs> a true statement. 
Oh, I'll be off diner side again. We can let him go away to put push ons. Yeah, and we'll keep yeah. it uh, shut up. If he is. If you refresh, right? Let's say you have the refresher. If you refresh on the secondary tombstone. Do they do two different targets as opposed to the that? that should be how it works. Yes. I gotta test the staff fire twice. Fudge. Uh, my game is better. Please remind me, Sarah, because I want to see what sure. Well, what happens when you're, you're like, pop, pop, stop, you stop. <laughs> He's just proposing him to, to finish off the two storm or got killed with the morphling with a buyback on the water boy. Shula's dead, two in the that's corner. It, that's the An game. ultra kill for the club, yeah. and PG gets called. Holy grail. Mammoth should stay strong, hold out against Supernova, Ready? and in AK make a thrilling comeback and secure a game pump in the best of three times. I don't know if the game was like supposed to be this chaotic. Then they have so much more team fight uh, like they have a very good draft but uh, looking at the, how they played it like we haven't seen sonic waves uh chain frost has not been used for like a good 20 minutes
Dara Team Ban. Desce, faz o banimento de AM. Now it's time to protect Medusa. I think every single team out there understands these like Shadow Demon, Darkshire, Anti Mage bands need to come out. Mm. There's also another one, but like fourth one that I like, which is Pringo. I'm not gonna say he's as good as others, but uh, yeah, you might need to ban out Shadow Demon for this. You know, we've seen, especially in China, seconds, coming maybe. up in terms of dealing with the Medusa. For similar reasons as the Pango you just mentioned, Wind Ranger with the Fusal Blade, it's in a decent enough option against this hero. But uh, she's also been falling less into core roles and more as a support. So maybe Supernova feel like there's space for that. Try to slot her into a draft. We'll see. If I made it work, I carried from position four a few times in the previous DPC, but we might mm -hmm. see something similar. Uh, this is a really strong opener from Holy Grail. It's Master Medusa. You have ways to amplify damage output from Medusa, uh, provide down vision with the Hawk or her multi shot, the so, split shot that is. What I want to see now is them being here more of a quaddle. Pugna would have been the best. Five I do want to have just one additional battery for the Medusa. So you're not wholly reliant on inner beast aura, but get it if you're super good. And they're the bands that you mentioned, my friend. So Supernova, they must now decide. Are we going Wind Ranger or Pangolier? It's way too risky to not pick a hero that buys Diffusal, though. You have to at least pick one of them. Yeah, the question is, do you want to go for Pango? This is a flexible pick for them. This because it can be played as position Five one. Seconds, but I think remaining. you can fit in Pango in your draft if you really want it. But then you are picking Pango into Medusa and Beastmaster, which could be like you roll in, you get roared, uh, stone gaze, you're gonna die, especially once Medusa mm. get to her like third, fourth item, you can just straight up die without getting a spell off. Yeah, that is definitely true. Seconds remaining. I think there's generally two ways to approach this Medusa problem. One of the ways I've seen Five is some team is picking remaining. an obscenely mobile lineup so that when she does pop stone gaze, you just uh, completely move away from her, then try and poke it prod back into the fight. See if Supernova decides to take that particular approach as it's their turn to pick Radiant having removed team. sapphire from the pool that would normally precipitate a phoenix in this region there it is and indeed it is a hey. <laughs> supernova for team supernova uh, they're memeing you it wanted up. to see it i right? like it yeah i wanted to see it in game one uh again supernova lich Ten phoenix it's a lot of team fight this time around void spirit five does seconds have remaining bit more control compared to Kunkka. Like, he doesn't rely on just X mark the spot. Uh, I'm down for Puck. I, I feel like Storm or Puck feels really nice against all of these Radiant heroes. They don't have this real viable lockdown. They did pick Dark Willow. We also called for the pick in the previous game. Feels mm. really nice. You can terrorize on top of Medusa, save her. You can terrorize other heroes like the Egg and then go for the egg but uh, with remaining. the split shot also feels nice against phoenix in general she built Five the manta butterfly remaining. it's a lot of tech and you know the split mm -hmm. shot can still deal damage to others around the egg also like that it complicates life for the phoenix bramble is very annoying to try and icarus dive through if you're already not positioned perfectly in the fight yeah uh i like this if it goes long enough you also get the hilarious agonim scepter and that's the Dying. additional siege of the high ground so it's nothing to speed down these buildings and uh this is going to be their battery so instead of going for some quaddle pick up the oracle nice little classic combination with the producer it's uh, as crazy as it used to be but still pretty good given that super
in the new pad. What are the what are these changes? I can't. Remember. But uh, I thought there was like some changes that I was not aware of, or like yeah. Catch Tinker. Tinker got nerfed heavily after recent changes to the blink, so we'll have to see if he's gonna make it work. Now it's a more skilled Tinker. Yeah, it's always been a comp bounty Tinker. Just like Super though, but they they do like, like this bounty overall as a hero. And now paired it up with Tinker. Hmm. You are playing into Oracle. I'm not sure if I I like it too much, to be honest. Mm. I just like it because it is something new and fresh for us. Yeah. We get to see more. Pretty much every game that I've seen it utilized. So in tandem with that. Also, I just like the fact, you know, I was mentioning in the draft, I want to see a mobile draft against Medusa. This is really mobile. Void Spirit, Tinker, with Bounty. Even Phoenix as well, not too shy on the movement department. So I like what Supernova has. And no matter what, I think they're going to give us a fun game. So let's go. Game two. Holy Grail already one game up. Nobody wants to see this win, Lacoste. Dude, Beast Monster Medusa Oracle. This is so cookie cutter. If this loses, life is better for all of us because uh, we get some exciting things happening, not just the usual expected runs of events. Yeah, what do you want to see? You want to see uh, uh, Tinker Bounty winning? I think everybody who played Dota experienced this <laughs> at a certain point in their life. It's been a while. And uh, you, you can't seem to be too happy about it. Unless it's you're a Tinker or Bounty, you're like, yeah, man, this combo is so good. I want to play with my friend. You just need to find one of those rare friends that do play Tinker. Mm. All the people play Dota with have long since and that MMR matters to them with playing Tinker, so I haven't seen one of these in the game in a while. We're going to see how it goes here. Intrigues. This breaks down for Supernova. The the game two. Begins. Let's go. Last game, we didn't have any weird shenanigans with any bounty runes. First, it also took us like, what, six minutes to find? So are we going to be having the same situation or having to wait quite a while before action breaks out? No, uh, I don't think so. I could see this top lane, Holy Grail, doing really good. It's a killer lane for sure. One misplay from Lich could cause him a lot of problems. I'm really surprised that we don't see too much Dark Willow being picked. This hero is insanely good. Maybe I'm slightly biased because I love to play the hero. It's just this ramp metal maze in the lane. It's so good. Phenomenal spell, honestly. Uh, what does this mid lane look like? I haven't seen it in a while. The Ember versus Tinker. Now, obviously, the Queen of Pain really struggles, which we anticipated. What do we expect to happen here with these two heroes? I think I shouldn't have too many problems in this lane. Playing into M. Like, you use laser, there's not written rule Dota. When you use laser, it's been like that for years now. How do we know if it's unwritten? I guess it's passed on by me He's telling me to you laser someone, and then you have to get like one CS, one deny out of it. Okay. Khan must follow the rules. Khan mess us up, my friend. Make sure that these lasers work out for you. Will be a okay in this mid lane. Top lane should be fine as well. Yeah, they have this Bramble Maze Beast Master, but they have Void Spirit with Lich behind them. It this feels so hard. Oh, Carrier, Carrier, Carrier they will die. Shola able to get another quarter kill. Uh, was it him last game that was assassinating someone's careers the entire game? Yeah. Another pull from Chola. This top lane getting some good denies. Well, Dong is nicely 11 1 on Void Spirit. Getting a drag back onto this Beastmaster. There's the Resonant Pulse, gives him the, the old Frush on top of that. My god, punching through is going to be so oh. hard. DQQ was hitting him forever, dude, and it barely did any damage. Blood Grenade didn't connect on Dong. Maybe they wanted to go for. 
Some counterplay. Ramblez wasn't available. Tool. Not force you all to huddle close. No one's gonna mm, end up right. there on that side of the map. Down here on bottom. Uh, you said another drop. <laughs> that we can't expect him to have the best game ever. And this bounty, given that he has to play into Medusa Oracle. Mid laner is Tinker, right? Wow. Tinker's gonna end up doing well, but Tinker's a farm thing, not a rotating mid laner. It's gonna take some time before help can come if things don't go amazingly. Like he's getting his CS, but definitely has to watch himself make sure he's never out of position here. You get close. Oh, seven seconds come later is up in this mid lane. Uh, ooh, Bramble doesn't connect. You want to place Bramble like slightly more so they like they go potentially to the second Bramble as well. It's a, I would say, relatively difficult spell to execute. It's a skill shot. Um, not a hard to look bad on the hero. Easy, what I meant. Super simple. Everyone can look bad. Yeah, oh. this, this, this sort of stuff. Like, like uh, you missed use your terrorize. Also, I want to see what he starts to put in more points. Either whether it's gonna be Bramble or Shadow Realm. I do like Bramble more to have more control since you're playing mm -hmm. into Void Spirit. Shadow Realm has been buffed, so we might see him pick up a second point on it. But uh, goes into Bramble, and now Void Spirit is in trouble. Did he? Yes, he needs the help of Shola to throw in the Frost Blast. Oh, the Shadow Realm hit almost killed Nova. First Blast. That will end up dead anyway as Dolan throws in the Wild Axes. And Supernova's Void Spirit is dead. Okay. Good stuff coming from the Holy Grail. To make matters even better, Dolan is the one that gets the, the kill. He gets the bonus gold. Very shortly away from getting the Helm of Iron World, so he, he can just leave with the Dark Willow. We'll head to the other side of the map as they watch the team is getting brought down. Gan will end up dead as well, too. A burn dam coming out of sheep. So even beyond the grave, X has his influence felt on the map. The QQ TP admitted was a long his second TP to the mid lane. He can't even help him, doesn't have mana to do so. So, trades, who's uh, farming in this bottom lane which leaves Dolmel on top, but still Dong CSing nicely. Like even with this first blood that he gave away, doing a really good job. Hmm. Oh. I think we should still get the battle fury. The CS numbers for Supernova still do look quite decent for them. So, just wanna farm, farm, farm fest. Does this bounty hunter build exactly the same as he did in the previous game? We just go like a uh, solar crest, crimson pipe, something else more important. Uh, I'm down for crimson again since you're playing into Medusa, but if he wants to go for more scaling. Huh? Uh, of course, sorry to interrupt you, but look at this an early rotation from a Tinker. Not stuff that you see every day. The remnant will connect and on. Getting a kill with the laser. Three six minutes TP rotation from a Tinker. I have officially seen it all today. <laughs> if that re Remnant doesn't connect, then it's a disaster, but he manages to get it. And we're getting very close to his Blink Dagger. Gonna continue to farm up. Stacks that they made for Tinker in the triangle. They have couple DQQ. Shadow Realm still available. So we'll be able to get out of trouble. Sheep not as lucky. And Icarus dive away though. And that should keep him alive. So, both lineups have a support. Suffering a little bit in the damage department. He could just uh, shadowing Han. You know, walk underneath the same tree if he goes too far forward. So, very good time to retreat. He denied it, making sure that the Tinker actually has to go home to replenish his arsenal. But from the Dark Widow and the game. Got a couple of kills happening. Still stays uneventful from a kill perspective. People still prioritizing their farm for now. Both teams farming. Gone is at level 6 on Ember. You yet to see a rotation coming out from him. I think it should go if he does start oh, to oh, They don't yeah. have Primal Roar this just yet. This is massive. Two XP runes. Uh oh. SJ got one. Now Dark DQ got five. the other one. And Sheep. Sheep is only level 3. Hasn't cracked level 4 just yet. We'll now be aware that this has been stolen. Say sorry, boys. Couldn't get you in time. Feels bad. Yeah, th th this is 
makes the difference in a game. Both Lich and Phoenix are very level-dependent heroes. You need that big to have the fight presence. Oh, I'm by Jordan. Dude, this guy has no chill. I've been loving to watch him play Dota. Because he just goes all in every time. It's not diff to his form, man. Seeing these new pieces, and I must say, Supernova, I don't know who at the app department does the scouting, but this time around, some of the players they've gotten for this team really do show some some promise and potential just with a few games to see from them so far. Yeah, you, you can look, check a couple of games and see players that definitely stand out more than others. Number in this bottom lane, he got a lot of his gold stolen. As soon as Bounty picked up that Vanguard, he is ready to go. Oh, is middle is dead. Under I take out the gun. Word down by his Ember Spirit with the supports backing him up. SJ is the one credited with the kill. It is Radiant huge, huge, huge. That stalls out the Blink Dagger from the Tinker. Puts Ember in a good position. Papa, region yeah. soon. Potentially go and force a fight somewhere on the map. He was TPing, but ends up canceling it. Will content himself with just farming mid. Radiant used Scan to see if it's Bounty or someone else approaching Medusa, because she's really low on mana. Does have one healing Lotus to work with. Magic stick, however, on Medusa. That's an interesting one. This is scary. She does have a match, though. But she's still going to be out of mana. She's actually dead. Song just showed up, taking a trip through the twin gate at the Astro step to close the gap. That's an easy kill to pick up. Oh, my goodness. Medusa dead. The one bright spot is they're not playing with, like, some visage Beastmaster offlane. So at the very least, it's not that easy for them to take your tower off the killing juicer, but still is under attack. Oh, good. No damage. Towers. Bounty, Lich, Phoenix. Like, these heroes don't deal any kind of damage. Like, all five of them, pretty much. But buy, for the love of God, buy Magic Wand on Medusa. It's the best item you can get. Like, gives you stats. As, like right now she has 186 HP. If she has mad one there, because Bounty used like multiple sh shuriken tosses, mm. Phoenix with Icarus dive, fire spirits. I think you survive there with like one TP rotation potentially. Radiant's bottom tower is oh, under attack. Juicer. I thought I've caught onto that memo just yet. Dong is gonna take the twin gate back home. And it looks like he's deviating somewhat from what we've seen it. Harry Voice Birds, holding Echo Saber into Harpoon Straits. No Battle Fury stop off. Okay, so to be more active on the map than we expect. Here yeah. in the river, show up. Were people building Battle Fury? I don't remember yeah. seeing a single game. Radiant's top tower. See? Under Voice Bird builds Battle Fury in this region, brother. Who showed us the way? Told us. Shola should end up dead here. At the same time, the Bounty Hunter will end up taking a tumble in the top lane in tandem with the Dark Wolf. Oh, some assassinations across the map. Dong does survive. But yet, I'm just telling you, this battle fury, it's, it's, it's good. It doesn't sound like it, but it's actually pretty good. I'm a bigger fan. Like, it sounds a little lackluster, because you don't get stats out for you. You get Echo Saber, you get the damage, you get the stats, Man region, and then you get Manta style, Deniso, whatever route you want to go for. Like, sometimes I've seen even Void Spirits pick it up Aghanim Scepter, if it's a really good game for it, where they need more control, even from the carrier role. But uh, I'm down to see this Battle Fury. What, what's the next item after we finish off Battle Fury? Uh, so you go Battle Fury, they've been two different books. One went Battle Fury straight into Scotty. The other one went uh, Battle Fury, Manta, Manta, Scotty, Nullifier. Uh, no, Nullifier came first before the Scotty finished, yeah. Nullifier is a big item on Void Spirit where you have the kill threat on support. These like Pavis, Glimmer Caves, Four Staffs, they don't work. Radiant's Suddenly they stop working. Is under attack. My frog sold you. Broken <laughs> item. Yeah, so I want a refund. Uh, oh, definitely wants a refund for some of the vision on the map. He's like, please take back your wards. Take back your heroes. Don't show me. Down this lich. Face for the beast monster. And we're getting closer to finishing the Harmony Overlord. And shit me the top part of the map is completely owned by Tolem and Holy Grail. Managed to find some farm and is level six, which is pretty nice considering that their XP room got stolen. Here with the supernova, God has a 50 remnant available, so not too scared about this. Even has one available. Dong thought about going in. Only now did Aether Remnant come back off cooldown, so impossible to do so.
The Olmec can't really help him out. He has no mana, so for now, playing on a different side of the map. I want to see Gon be more, slightly more maneuverable. I want to see him move around and try to get stuff done. You can see where Cholo is collecting that XP. Plus Chen. Handle Midas bounty. What am I? What, what is I this? I was about to ask you about this. Dude, I was literally about to ask you about this. And say, are you, have you seen what this uh, bounty is doing? This is so pog. Hand. Have you, I don't think I've actually seen a Midas on a bounty from the offlane like this. But you'll see how it all goes. I don't know what I feel. How to feel about this one? It's like <laughs> doing with Hand of Midas makes sense on you. Uh, Wait, Gun is dead. Gun is dead. Gun is dead. Oh no, he didn't have a safety remnant. He thought he could like get out, but just gets picked off. Oh no. Well, not that means Lacoste. It means we're even closer to the Midas, baby. Bouncy got the kill. <laughs> I don't know if he wants to commit to it. I just don't see the synergy. Because you don't right click. It's more about the gold. You get gold from Janata. You get gold from Trap. Like you need more gold. I get more cool. So, so Radiant heroes. Scanning. There's him many team smoke up. Very nice Radiant scan. Next flush onto the support and the bounty. However, they still are going to come across DQ to a Dublin. The question is, do they have what it takes to find this kill? Flush so, around almost immediately. Unfortunately, not going to be fast enough for the sinister days. So, DQ will live. All they can do is try and take back some control on their jungle. At least this time. So, no, it's up their bounty rune. I'm uh, sorry, XP rune. Khan will pick it up, continues to farm stacks that they made for him. Going into Shiva's guard next. Came right now. Yeah. Throwing itself into a bit of a crawl like what you saw in game one, around a similar portion of time. However, Supernova, unlike in game one, don't seem to have any plans for grouping up to take any towers. At this stage in game one, they've already taken mid, bottom, and we're setting up for like a tier two tower push down bottom. This time, much more concerned with getting the money for the Tinker and uh, finishing off this Manta style potentially for the Voidsburg. It's like Supernova is not in a rush. Want to keep farming. Tinker just got his first big item. Holy Grail, they're also not really in a rush to do anything. It feels like everyone's going away, even gone. The hero that's supposed to set up for them. He's just trying to finish off a BKB. But he is being aggressed into, potentially. They take out his Myth Hammer, but that'll give him the information that he needs to play very, very safely. Also, speaking of playing safely, going into BKB as his first item on Ember Spirit. Things that he's gonna die needs to be the one dealing with like Kalich, Phoenix. Rune of double damage. I don't mind it. He has, like, whenever Ember Spirit has a bit of a slower start, they tend to go for it, but it's also gonna slow you down in terms of farm. Hmm. I wouldn't find too much if he's just gonna go for a male to now. Then he might be in a bit of. He still has a drama. He's fine, he's fine. But yeah, but if you went for a male first. The game doesn't feel like it's active enough, so it's not going to change all that much in the next, say, I don't know, 10 minutes. That KB first would feel really good. I think you'd still probably get the item if you went for the Maelstrom first. Yeah, I'm okay, it's still switch it, which is what we'll hammer first to have that option. I wouldn't mind seeing Maelstrom because it seems like it's going to be a farm game. Look at Tinker, his HP. Whew, I got worried there for a second. Well, you. You only dropped down to 10 HP, bro. <laughs> What's the issue? Fine. Thank God for him that there's no blood seekers in this game. What's he gonna be building after the Shiva's gone on this team? World of the Oyster. Team similar to game, they have butt bits, but they still don't have the best uh, lockdown. So a hex at some point would really you start on would feel very nice for the team. There it is. And the might have been 17 minutes and then Bounty Hunt. Um, I'll get, I need okay. to go check how fast this is. Okay, let's global stats. Hold on. There, so you have Fractal, you have Janata, you have Midas now. In terms 
terms of neutral items, you get Philosopher's Stone. That's it. Oh, that's, that's the most baby. greedy build that I would ever see. Uh, you can't go, like, buy a refresher after. Refresher, Octarine, no <laughs> cooldown, and everything. List. Yeah. I mean, that's what Doom does. I would love to see it. That's the how Doom is sort of. Yeah. Is it? Let's so see check what this the fuck it is. I swear. So check no. this out, man. Ring of Aquila. Oh, Maybe there was no Philosopher's Stone available. Uh, so here, first, uh, a, a quick random stat question, Mr. Lacoste. How many Midas's do you think Bounty Hunters have bought in all pro games? Dyer's middle tag. Something tag. Oh, also after this engagement, Doc oh, jumps in right now. He's finding SG on the Oracle. The Oracle is still alive. Force of Force promise himself, however. He's eating a lot of rockets from this tinker. We'll just get back. Dropping the terrorize though, coming in from GQQ to create some space. But the team still wants to fight. Dyer's Shola tower. has He's the full chain for us available. Has to the gaze. They really want to target. He even just got the spirit whistle for Jeep. However, holy f all deny them. There's the sinister gaze. They finally found God. What? God. He had vision. Because he knew these heroes were here. They have an observer ward. Yeah, so some of Gun's movements around the map have been really questionable. Like who, what he did with Queen of Pain in the first game, a couple of those blinks, uh, going for runes. Uh, but give me the answer. What about that Hand of Midas? So, before this game, there have been 14 Hand of Midas's across all Dota history, built on Lance Hunter. Funnily enough, Shen here, this is, his timing on this is fourth. The previous fourth timing on this was him again on Bounty Hunter. 17 minutes, four Maybe seconds picking this up. Yeah, but yeah, 15 of them top four, and two of them are him in that uh, bracket. And, and 14 uh, out of those 14 and the Midas pick up some bounty, he was the one who did it 13 times. Uh, 14 times, yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's not four. Granted the kill here. I could see Holy Grail going for a Roche on raid. Which is going to be in 20 seconds. It's now the vision. You have damage from this beat map. You have a little as well. It's about to finish off Scotty. But a different build of Summer. No butterfly second item. Butterfly second item gives you like that insane amount of damage early on. Gives you the tankiness. Gives you the region. Let's check into MKB next. Getting a quick jump onto SJ. This time around, you should be able to pick up the track goal off of this. Don't do nothing. Uh, <laughs> even getting some Janata. Thank you very much for the bonus. I guess the reason why he doesn't go for butterfly is to play any right pickers. You're playing a thinker, portal spirit, bounty fighter, and right clicker. Because the thing that I see in his quick eye, BKB, S and Y. We'll have to see if he commits for it. I'm just so put in, intrigued by Chen's build in this game. It's very fun to see. Uh, on the other side of the map, Gan did decide to commit for the full BKB, so he is going to end up getting his net worth really predicated on how much activity he can cause on the map, which can be a problem. But if they can connect with these fights, it can get a lot better. But they have to connect with those. Once he gets a BKB, I want to see them smoke immediately. Does DQQ have one? He does, yes. Waiting in the inventory, in the backpack. So once the BKB is online, let's go find a kill on the map. So I'm playing. Yeah, she might try to kill the Summer Medusa. Supernova the pop for this one as well. Terrorize does come out, but obviously it doesn't do anything to the Supernova. Egg does pop. The Stone Gaze from the Medusa does dissuade the rest of Supernova just running and after kill. In the meantime, Han gets hit with the Primal Roll. He's being chased down right now by these Holy Grail heroes. And they will find the Tinker. He's brought down to right, no buyback available. Chain Frost bouncing around from Shola. It doesn't have that much of an impact. Gone is on the fourth edge of the fight. He has the game there, but they don't have enough damage to kill him off. Nova, they need them more punch right now as they're beating down the Emma Long though, can't really make this happen. Summer is out of mana, but it's also on the high ground, away from the deeper part of this fight. Dong simulates away. The rest of Supernova doesn't want to keep fighting. A lot of heroes fall very low, Lacoste, but only one ends up tumbling. 
in the pit crew. He got to the fence, Matrix off, so some extra status with him that's kicking in. It was enough build for Dark Willow to connect, get the kill there. You can see lack of damage on their side, because Scotty is like a real damage item on Medusa. Makes her super tanky, going into MKB next, to have that ability, have that item to counter laser from Tinker. It's been a lot of stacking. If we could see the number of stacks that Supernova did, I think the... Right. Especially the ancient stacks, they've been in this outer ring, in the triangle, doing a lot of work. Both supports, Han also stacking for himself. Every single time I see him farming, it's always stacks that he's farming. I'm gonna make another one right now. So we have a triple stack of ancients to be farmed up. Seeing him on the side guard gives me some very vivid flashbacks of Mark Machines. Thank God that's why I was out of the game. So I'm gonna it's a young dispel on top of himself, but could still end up dead here. Dong doesn't have Aether Remnant just yet, though. And there's still a tier 1 tower. Lots of reinforcements all streaming in. Primal roll thrown in. Aunt Terrorize is there as well. Do they have the damage to kill him all in time? Yes, they do. As he falls, Jen should follow him into the grave. The rest of Supernova just want to flee. Big pickup for the Holy Grail. And this might open up the tier 2 no, tower, but more importantly, this could open up Roche. Yeah, what? See some earlier Roche. Rainbow doesn't connect. It was a close on those close. That's yet too bad for sure. Attack. So now, what's Dyer's the plan here, Lucas? We keep losing this void spirit. And the second time he's gone Dyer's down into an engagement, attack. he's definitely not tanky enough just yet. He still also need damage, right? So does he tank the L? Will BKB protect on void spirit? And then both damage later, or will the deck help his team out more right now? Uh, BKB into top. Primal Thunder Roar, top. Stone Gaze doesn't feel too good. I think you need to go all in on the damage, get the Nullifier or get Natalus, and go from there. Because you want to be taking out these supports first, first, resetting multiple times, cross shield on top of you, dissimilate out of the trouble. Now Stinker looking, and farming those stacks. In the outer range, she was gone completed. Going into E Blade next. Like more burst damage. An item that deals well with Medusa as well. So, Medusa, probably Radiant after seeing that tower. one, might want to go for BKB. If there's an. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Finished another bit or so. Mm. Also, try to add into some anti tinker territory. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, you'd have just off it as a guardian beast. So I imagine he finishes GG. Then we'll have Primal Roar. <laughs> this is the answer to the team. And these heroes, they don't have saves just yet. Like, they have Frost Shield, yeah. And what an eventually you can get Axe Foot for. But right now, Tinker gets jumped. Um, well, too much about at a Supernova lineup. Dyer's you try to spray a net out it, maybe throw a Frost Shield. In terms of the Pavis, in terms of like the items forced that could push the trouble are not available. And Dolme, it's a demonization of Spipe, Guardian Greeks, and Stinker. You want to have these items. Brave of Destiny also drop from Oracle, so some extra healing, some extra damage. We're going to be fighting. It's a, such a cool upgrade, like it was old Axe. It has been added to the server with reduced numbers. Gen, forced to buy. Only BKB. BKB. Ah, fuck, great. That's a nine second charge already taken away. Middle tower is under Some attack. Tower didn't have to do anything for it, just as really showed up. Him and Gun just got there. Chen's like, oh snap, BKB time. So that gives Holy Grail the advantage around the Roshan pit. Medusa just picked up an NKB as well, so her damage output is through the roof. This walking into the pit, they're gonna dare Supernova to fight them Radiance here. Middle tower is under attack. It's a lot of damage, so look at it go. It's very difficult for Supernova. They need to land some, like, six Supernova. Uh, that's the spam. Uh, it's only level one now. So this dies yeah. quickly. You, again, you're playing a Beastmaster plus Medusa. 
Good bramble. Just got to come out. They see everything. They do indeed. They get a raw onto sheep. They should kill off this phoenix very early on. Does that buyback get needed? Long on the north of the fight. This is all this falls onto the oracle. The rest of Holy Melda will do no such thing onto Chola. They kill the ledge. Chen will be next. He used BKB earlier, so he didn't have it available to defend himself here. So Holy Grail not only get an Aegis. They get three heroes. You know what's crazy, Lacoste? You know earlier on you mentioned how big the Wisdom Wood pickups are going to be? Yeah. This Phoenix was a 325 experience. Oh, 225, sorry, from having level 12. Dyer's Maybe if you got that Wisdom Rune, you feel more comfortable with level 2 Supernova taking the fight. You don't yeah. have it, so you just end up losing Dyer's stuff. The problem is you think Steven Hughes Supernova, you have an undervision of Hawk Radiance and Observer Ward. So, attack. like, this whole fight, they've seen everything. And what a shocker. Bounty Hunter with Hand of Midas not doing well, huh? Not you didn't ask. You didn't ask me how many of those 14 prior game yeah, victories. None. <laughs> oh no, there, there were some, there were some, there were some. There were five. Five victories. Well, that, that's definitely not coming from the Bounty's Hand of Midas presence. It's like, oh my... I morph with 20 and 0 while I build Hand of Midas and Bounty at 1. Would he have been inspired to work harder for the victory if yeah, I bought good yeah, items? No. Bad. So just played a normal game. Now, normal game means sports die very easily. Shola about to get right click down. Young didn't end up getting a kill onto DQQ though. Sadly, no track goal on top of it. So drop an Aether end to ensure his escape. And he isn't able to get himself out to safety, but it doesn't really matter on the side of Holy Grail. Someone got to show up, be involved in another kill, and now they just say, well, there's an untapped. Dyer's bottom Barracks to take. Might as well take the buildings and then see if we can seize the hydron once we get to These are both towers that are about to be taken by Holy Grail. John will keep you take Dyer's the XP rune on, on their side of the map. Does have remnant available if he needs to reconnect Dyer's with the team. That seems like Supernova. Tower. They don't want to take this fight. E Blade now completed on Tinker. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. But there's this Medusa Beastmaster, like the best has been holding Philosopher's Stone two games in a row. Dyer's like Dolday also wants to play greedy, both off laners want to get gold out of nowhere. I'm going into the Blink Dagger, as you mentioned. It's going to help with the positioning, finding Double this thinker. Dyer's Middle Tower empowers me. So much money being picked up. Dolom has an absurd amount. Dude, actually, let's just take a second, right? Uh, Lizard likes to do this thing every now and then of just looking how much farm these beast monsters get for no reason. Look how much further ahead he is over and above these cores on the entire lineup. This is ridiculous. This, this is illegal behavior. This should not be allowed. It's insane. These bastards just to... <laughs> insane hero, how much he can farm. Farm this ancient black dragon. Only you can be the most farm hero in the game by keeping up with Medusa, uh, which is pretty nuts to think about. Not even keeping up with her, the enemy lineup, doing so with the same team. So. And he is fine. I'm here, they're on the high ground. This is why I don't want this lineup to win, dude. He's lost to Medusa. You know how many games are put to this? Medusa, that on the high ground, pushing and they can't do anything? You know how many God, games I lost, PTSD. period? <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Jumping on the back end of the fight is going to be Dong. Looking for SJ, but they don't find him. His promise will be there in time. Keep the Oracle of Shiva's God. Thrown on by Hanma. Okay, he actually stuns up the Tinker. He's trying to TP out. He's not going to be allowed to do so. Primal Roar is going to be the end. Terrorize to follow this one up. And despite having Frost Shield, despite having the Defense Matrix, still has no life. Dead without Bylands for another minute. And Dong, unfortunately, doesn't have the damage to pick off the supports. Now they're gonna finish off these barracks, go for the last uh, second set, and it's gonna be easily taken. Without Taker, you can't take the fight. Right? What is Bounty gonna do? Like, what, what, what's his purpose right now? Throw a couple of tracks that are gonna get first off from Oracle. Dyer's top barracks are under attack. Dyer's top barracks. It's first doing what he can the mid lane to cut these creeps. The frost shield delay proceeding as much as possible. Okay, and the protection, protection will kick in. They have I think they still have enough damage. Yeah, they should get max anyway. They pick it up, but as they retreat, one of them, 
Walking around with the Silver Edge. It's not the same place in the world for him to be. He's going to go directly onto SJ. He can he at least this time get the kill? No, he cannot. And now he gets Primal Road. He's in trouble. He's in danger. He's going to get killed for No settle into the air for Chen. And as soon as the Bounty Hunter drops, there's no way that he lives through this fight. The Chicken Trust was thrown in by the Lich, but unfortunately, the all of thrown by the Beast Monster into Army. No damage from the Lich. Nothing else the team of Supernova can do. Now Holy Grail's like, well, we're prepared to leave. If you wait, want us to stay, okay, we can stick around for a while. Yeah, I was watching Bounty Hunter closely in that previous fight. He came in used one not a hit and look at that damage yeah that's it that's the damage and one shuriken toss and it went back and that's it he died afterwards uh, holy ground i want to finish out the game uh they're done with it medusa without ages bkb is now done how do you stop this thinker it will need to go like mad mad mode let's see Throwing in some missiles right now. Dolan's also waiting in the wing here. Potentially looking for a jump. He bounced it onto the beast monster. Dolan losing his HP, but the fast fighters will be there. Stone Game came out with Medusa as well. They named it to catch and kill sheep. Just a buyback, and maybe Chen might not be as lucky. He's in the midst of this fight. He got Primal Road up. He's gonna get right clicked out. He has buyback. What can he do with it? Well, the man, the Phoenix, that committed these spells. Tinker on the other side of the fight. Trying to help and support this voice good. Just jump to the south. They don't have enough damage. They have to be alive. They have to be alive. They have to use all their spells to do this, though. Chen about to die back to the supernova. Yeah, yeah, but not on top of him, so it provides zero protection. Dante has it in 70 seconds. No buyback. Trolla getting ran down now as well. Will probably tie on the Lich, but does have the buyout. Immediately return to the fray. However, while all this is happening, Mega Creeps have been claimed. Han from the low ground, throwing in some Shivas and some missiles. But they don't care about it and stuff. Golem still has the Guardian Grease. However, Summer is down to 370 mana, so... That'll finally sound the alarm for them to leave. Uh, they yeah, yeah. everything they wanted to begin with. I'm just looking at damage number from Bounty. He bought back and he dealt <laughs> 176 damage. What a hero. Look at him go. He bumped. That, like, he used BKB and ran to Medusa. Hit her one. Died afterwards. Yep. Well, yeah. 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 It should be possible for us, the spectators, viewers, whatever. We can referee this is the TKO, man. They are part of this game. This is starting to hurt yeah, their psycho psychology. psychology. Yeah, exactly. End the game right now. It's good. They have laser against Meg Creeps, and they have used Hand of Midas instantly kill that Meg Creep and to make that a hop. They don't really deal well with Mega. No, no, no. That's good, boys, for it is my battle fury, you have no wins here. Yeah, there we go. Oh, uh, no. Here he comes, looking for the end of the game. Uh, just jumps in by himself. He knows that he's under no threat. TKB actually kills off shoulder. No buyback for him again. And uh, Shen will actually find himself a quick pickup <laughs> onto this God Ember Spirit. As soon as his PKB is done, the mini starts from the Jnada head. They burst him with the E-Blade. And well, the game keeps going, I guess. That gun, I, I was watching him on camera. He had the big smile after that move. Uh, man, I'm supposed to see them. Of course, of course, of course. Yeah, Check yeah. out the recap. Check out the recap. Check out the recap. Look at how much damage the bounty has to do this well, more, more than Void Spirit. How do you deal 36 yeah. damage with that? How do you, how's that even possible? That, that's one Chain Frost bounce. <laughs> what is that? That's like the Frost shield. I haven't even know 36 damage. Like one way to play. But you use Chain Frost, it seems like it didn't connect on anything or there was uh, oh. right. the damage numbers of the least of the warriors on the side of Supernova. <laughs> how on earth do we defend this face to see how it was at half HP? Nobody has buybacks. But now, what's the plan? Where do we go from here? Good. The answer is you, you're not going anywhere, you can't really leave the base. Just be respawning the middle. I mean, you, Walmart might try to commit it because they try to see 
Can you just tell him to do something? What you do? And this game is unrepairable. Even repair kit could have fixed it. Oh, scan <laughs> Oh, 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 back into the cave just to give it an attempt. Spinova looking like the Hail Mary attempt. They are aware that Roshan is going to be the next big objective for Holy Grail. They smoke out with their heroes, but this is the worst target at the moment. Jola is here, assassin in the game, but they know that this glitch is dead. Sorry, mate, you're going to end up getting taken out. She's not even going to bother with the Supernova, but he is forced into it. Jola is still alive. What is that? And boys, G -G it. yeah, get, get out of this one. There's solo thinker defending the base again. Bounty. <laughs> oh, no. Bounty and Lich, our observer, having a lot of fun with these numbers. I kind of started it, but <laughs> he's memeing it up with us. Dyer's middle tower has been a cat man. Trying to finish off the game. It's Hunter, it's Hunter versus Fast Materia, and so far, Hunter, Hunter, including Superior. I will do his best. And that should be the game. Han Solo could not defend their base and will call G. Radiant. Well, this last game was a quick of a, an affair. Massive team fights happening, very back and forth, incredibly competitive. Uh, game two, it's not that, Lacoste. It's not that. It's the opposite of that. So it no. was. <laughs> Not even close. As I soon as I saw this Midas Bounty Hunter, I lost the faith in it. Like, if you want to scale, why don't you just get Agadims? It's
sentido isso mesmo. Que uma lane tá estourando bem ao top, né? Onde a Morphe tá tendo controle da lane, do o Pug, né? Pug fazendo a pressão, jogando muito bem. E o aí o intuito do Magnus é o que? Ficar rodão e farmar na lane, ele quer farmar nesse meio aí. E não tá acontecendo isso, né? A gente já vai pro. É, essa aqui, assim, foi, foi bom, já derrubou antes dos 10 pelo menos, o Magnus tá no nível 4, fazer um jogo é sim, ele tá 6, então, assim, o impacto do Magnus aqui, desse jogo, aí ó, demorar, porque tem que pelo menos pegar o nível 6, não sei se ele vai pagar a inversão de polaridade do nível 6, por conta da ruim, né? Provavelmente pode ser que ele pague fortalecer para farmar um pouco mais e recuperar esse jogo dele. Ó o Bibi! Uhum. Oh, dá uma olhada ali, às vezes acontece isso, a Valve tá bugando, isso já aconteceu comigo, e aí aconteceu com o Storm ali, tá vendo? O item dele, a lâmina do Falcão, dá 14 de dano, certo? Fica no Storm. Pra mim, ele tá com 2 de dano, que é só do fogo de fada. Ele tem que tirar o item, jogar na mochila e jogar pra cima, aí o item dá o dano. Ontem, oh, ontem bugou comigo isso, mas nessas últimas CT deu umas duas vezes que buga esse item. Tipo, eu comprei o um, um MKB. E aí eu falei, ué, cadê meu dano MKB? Eu tirei, coloquei, aí eu vou todo. Que bug, né? É, eu não sei se quando morre volta. Eu, 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 vamos ver. Opa. Conseguimos aqui, ó, o triângulo, o Sir vem fazendo um stack enorme. A partida segue agora a mil morna, né? com a vantagem da Geek de 3k no patrimônio. Tem as T1 do top, conta do bot já levada. Antes dos 10 minutos, isso é uma vantagem muito grande. Muito obrigado a mim ali. Storm vai direto no resquício. Mas aqui é a questão, tá sem mana, tem tomba no chão, um stack enorme ali, será que vamos descobrir? Fazer bem quente, tá sentindo o cheiro desse stack grande, apesar que tem uma tumba ali. Sir que já tá praticamente com sua greve quase pronta aí. Caramba, o mesmo bug pra Morphe. A Morphe não tá com nenhum dano adicional. Zero dano lá na frente. Que louco. Só se o item tá bugado, né? Mas... Hã? Ah! 
Então, eu imaginei isso, mas como é dano e não atributo, aí eu acho que não dá, entendeu? Porque ia, ia ter que estar aparecendo ali aquele mais 14. É, não viram, não viram. Nem, não nem. Ah, não. É, é porque isso é, é um detalhezinho aí. Os caras estão né, jogando um competitivo aí, valendo muita coisa. Então acaba se os caras. Esse mínimo detalhe em uma hora dessa passa batido. Uhum. Então. É... Gente, falar agora, meu amigo. O jogo começou quente ali, teve umas agressões, levaram as primeiras T1. Só que o jogo está se repetindo como foi o primeiro. Aqui que tem essa vantagem de espaço, tendo aí o patrimônio um pouco à frente, mas o HC da, da equipe da Odebrecht da segue farmando. Não está tão bem no jogo, mas ainda está farmando. Tá. Não, o lugar está a vida dele nesse jogo. Tá difícil, coitado. Hum, tá tomando muito dano mágico. Aí, aí. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Já não falta mais. É, tentaram ali dar um pick off na morte, mas ela já tinha conseguido me, me crack, né? Seus atributos. E aí esquece. Radiance top tower is under attack. Essa primeira aparição do Magnus na TF aí. Poderia ter controlado o Storm. É, não deu. Eu poderia ter controlado o Storm, poderia ter ido em outro herói. Quis focar o mais tanque da partida nesse momento, que é o Sir. O cara com 14 minutos na greve de uma vanguarda. Essa não vai matar ele. Pode ser que o jogo dê uma acelerada agora. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. É, tá sempre ele não participou agora desse abate em cima do PL, porque ele tá formando ele no top mesmo, é a zona de conforto dele, o jogo tá sendo ali. Então é por isso que ele participou dessa TF, mas é, segue formando, só que ele tá bem, bem, bem na frente desse, desse PL, assim, PL. Ele é cauto de morfo? É, mas... Quando você tá no mesmo nível do herói, quando você tá no mesmo patrimônio do herói agora, quando você vai se distorando muito, aí as coisas começam a mudar. Stupendous. Muito estranho. Acho que a equipe da Odevesta até perdido o mini mais uma vez. É... Oi, 
É, meu querido, se o Magnus continuar tendo essa inversão de polaridade tão ruim, assim, só em cima da cabeça desse ser que ainda dentro da, do, do ult dele, dentro da, da parede de réplicas, esquece. Não vai ser efetivo, não vai surgir efeito. Told you a storm was coming! A equipe do Devesso precisa desse ult para parar o Storm e não tem nada para o Storm. O Storm está simplesmente fazendo o que quer na partida. Não, sambando. E o Pugna é sendo ignorado, curando lá atrás, dando dano, botando sua sentinela. É, pode ser que venha mais um Olha lá, É, não estão respeitando não. Não não, 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 não digeriram bem aquela derrota. Ele é que foi devesso num comeback surreal. Radiant's top tower is falling. É, ele ainda só tem que usar o... Tem o Yash, tem o sendo bem executado pela equipe da Geek, é, eles não estão cometendo erros que eles cometeram no primeiro jogo e entregaram, né, de maneira só de e aí não querem dar outra chance, ou então, porque esse pé vem tomando, vai ser só ladinho. É, porque ele já não tem mais jogo com a equipe do Odebessa, Melhor que ficar tomando uma surra, é, é, acho que ele chama o GG logo, porque diferente do primeiro game, nesse time, nesses 19 minutos, a Medusa já tinha Butterfly manda e com a Skad encaminhada, então assim, e ela, é, é, ela consegue farmar, ela conseguia tomar um starter e segurar o time dela, então assim, era outra situação, até ele ainda teve... Uma galáxia de diferença aqui pro PL crescer esse jogo. Mark já tá de aganinho. Mas essa ganinha dela aí acabou. Ah, não, tá ali. O baixo é a última chance. Porque a equipe da, da Gwick não quer nem fazer o roxão. Fala, não, só vamos lá, gente, vamos pro terceiro game. A gente errou no fim do jogo, errou. Então agora nós vamos amassar. Só que, eu, que, que realmente eles amassaram o primeiro jogo. Ah, 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 esse PL vai ser de bala mais uma vez. Não sai não. É isso aí, meu querido. O que eu tava concluindo aqui, é, antes de chamar o GG, é que na primeira...
Answer. It is a little annoying for you as an Alk to go into these kinds of heroes because, you know, the SB can kind of get in your face, he can charge you, he can never strike you, and then you're kind of just like missing a lot of your uh, chemical rage duration. And same thing with Venomancer, he, like he, he forces you to build BKB. And weirdly enough to say, uh, Alks, if they can get away without building a BKB, they feel the best, right? Like they, they want to try and get these like hearts, ACs, abyssal blades, all these items that allow them to, to get in and deal damage. And if they get rid of the BKB from that build, they feel pretty good. Um, but this time around, he's going to be playing into a few annoying heroes for Big Brain. I, I, I like the Alchemist pick. I think that Team Zero have answered it really well with this TB. Um, and the heroes that they've got right now, I think Team Zero are in a, a really good spot. It just can be an issue of maybe they might be lacking a bit of lockdown for the Void Spirit. Yeah. They don't have that much lockdown, and their instant burst damage is a bit problematic, so there will be a phase of the game. Alchemist feels very good, but the Terror Blade helps you a lot, gives them the big punch they needed. They also didn't have that much building damage prior to the TB's inclusion in the draft. Now they definitely have that. Uh, they have some late-game scalability and some good laning prowess with Venom Monsters to defend them. 
definitely like the TB at the end. And I think it's a lot of the teams in China, especially when picking Alchemist, go out of their way to ban Terrorblade, uh, given how good mm -hmm. the matchup can be. So ultimately, at the end here, I, I'm i with you. I'm also going to lean slightly Team Zero, slightly, slightly. But beyond, and the boys will have to work hard if they want to make this victory possible for themselves. Mm. Because Big Brain, with this Alchemist, what we've seen from Alchemist in Div 2, certainly not a hero to underestimate or underrate. So let's find out here, Fluke, what happens in game number one. One team is going to get their first L of the series, the first L of the division. The other one, obviously just feeling very good, slowly but surely building the path towards Div 1. Yep, definitely feeling good with uh, how that has started. I think both these teams are pretty okay with how it's going. Um, I think maybe for Big Brain, they would have loved a little bit more of a dominant victory in their first series, considering from what we've seen from Limit. But uh, nonetheless, we're getting the, the series victory on the board. is always good for you. My big concern for the side of Big Brain, though, is potentially their bottom lane snowballing pretty hard out of control, especially with the Aquilus being the centerpiece of the... Um, of the draft from them, where this this Wind Ranger as well as the uh, the Spirit Breaker can do a lot of work for them. Um, both those two heroes, if they get off to a good start, if they snowball pretty hard, um, they can become menaces for for something like a, a Silencer. You really want to try and use your Global Silence in a good way, but if you're on a feed train, then I mean, a lot of the time you could just be using Global to try and save your own butt. Yep. On the bright side for them, though, if that lane does end up going very well, looking at Team Zero. If Beyond doesn't have a good game, we don't find like an early mobility item out of this Wind Ranger, no like early blink ATOS, then their team fight starting is pretty much just consigned to Spirit Breaker or Timber Swore running headlong into the fight. The so, bottom lane gonna be important for both of these teams as we do get off now. Game number one. There's a charge going on to CSJ, but surely they cancel it, right? Nope, actually, Ice Ice follows through with it. They're looking potentially for the first blood. However, with the Bramble Maze drop right behind them, doesn't seem like it's going to end up happening. Yeah, I mean, that that's, uh, may have been even better than getting a, a kill, right? Because CSJ, he has to go back to base. He's got a regen. So he's pulling out Tangos now, but you have to go to the Fountain just to get yourself a, a decent amount of HP. So CTY, him getting the Reflection is going to be punished early on because usually mm. you like to have the Metamorphosis to secure that first wave. But he doesn't have to do that now. He's just going up against a, a Dark Willow and he can free farm for free. This is good stuff. Feels like a good place to be. We finally see the TP coming in. But in the meantime, Dark Willow is getting ran on. She actually might end up being the first blood. CTY not going to end up getting the kill. As ZZQ found the last right click. But ultimately, this is... It does not get better than this. You force the Doom, like you said, to go back to base. While he's gone, you kill the partner in the lane. And now you both have the gold and experience advantage. So it's not like the Doom will have an easy time once he's arrived now. Yeah, this is this is a really rough lane uh, for Big Brain. Like, w when you play position five, yeah, this, Benno, is, this is a really rough lane. If you get off to a good start, uh, there's another one of those heroes. When you play position five, Benno, yeah, they might not. If you get off to a good start, there's another one of those heroes. Like, if you're playing position five, Benno, yeah, they might not. Yourself a lot of these early levels. Well, she can just get into if you're playing position five, Benno, and you get yourself a lot of these early levels. Bongo boots. She can just get into small, small. Maybe that's what I'm trying. I feel the bongo boots. Try and go for it. Maybe you go spirit this game. Maybe that's what I'm trying. In these team fights, try and go for it. Benno, he deals enough damage. To essentially be a threat and like in a these call. team fights, if you're not uh, dealing with a better it really sets up for Team Zero that they're going to look good. If like a, a lot of their heroes, uh, uh, this is where it really sets up for Team Zero that they're going to look good. If they're a lot of their something heroes, good uh, did end up happening for Big Brain though. CTY regrettably he popped this meta. Something good did end up happening. Only found two CS with it while it was active. Regrettably he popped this meta, but only found two CS with it while it was inactive. And now they might be able to find the kill though, man. If only you had meta now to run down CSJ, but they might still be able to find this kill. Although CCY feeling a bit too squishy, turns back instead. Now it's going to be the Dark Willow that's under threat. Reflection and some right clicks from ZZQ will lead into a death on said Dark Willow. And CSJ came forward for a devour. If ZZQ had like a win lace or something, that would be a dead doom right now. Fortunately for him, mm. that is not the case. Yeah, this top lane is, is rough. They have one CS, and that was from that one devour that uh, CSJ got. They have one CS collectively. And it's not like CTY is like scrambling and taking over the game where, you know, you see 7E who's like 15 and 2 in the mid lane. He's doing well for himself, but it's just the fact that CSJ has literally nothing. 
um, and neither does the Dark Willow. And, and ZZQ is doing an immaculate job right now as a position yep. five Veno. Just the way that he's constantly getting um, Poison Sting on both of these two heroes, now that it's level two, it does a lot of damage, and it just means that you're able to sit there and trade. And having Blood Grenades in the game was the, the biggest reason why I think that uh, position five Veno is very, very strong. Like, his right. abilities are good, but the fact you're able to, to Gale and get a few auto attacks off, and then by the time people get their movement speed back, you just throw a Blood Grenade on them, and there's basically enough damage for you to be able to secure the kill. We just saw there with the camera panning bottom, the contrast between these two lanes. Bottom solid, nobody really killing in each other. Fairly even farm between the two. And top is just an absolute dumpster fire. And middle, unfortunately for them, it's not faring much better for the side of Big Brain here because Sakata is getting handled a little bit by 7e here. Let's be honest, it's, it's not looking pretty right now on this Void Spirit. It's definitely a hard lane to right? Like, usually when we look across these mid lanes, it's, it's a bit of a snooze fest, but it is a snooze fest, but in, in a good way for Team Zero fans because it's basically just 7e really being able to, to stand up and go forward with a whirling death and not be pressured. And unfortunately oh no. for Sakata, he's the one that's under the pressure. CSJ might also be under some additional pressure. One more right click should oh. lead into his death. ZZQ has a killing spree on Venomancer. Pause five Venomancer four minutes into the game. All right. So now you, you, do you want me to tell you some even more bad news? Okay, hit me, bro. CSJ has two CS. Oof. They are both from Devour. Oof. He literally has not hit a single creep. He has eaten two. Th mm. That's it. Yeah. Okay, I can make it even worse for you, brother. So even though that was his first death, that's his second trip back to the fountain this game. <laughs> It just doesn't. It doesn't get any better. Uh, oh man, I'm feeling for CSJ. Like, every, everybody in their pub games has been in a game like this. Yeah, it gets even worse. DZQ is. You know, I like DZQ. He wants to share, man. He's like the top lane is going really well. Let me share some of the benefits of this. I'm gonna come bottom. We're gonna kill off this alchemist. So now the one lane. This is the only lane that was going okay for the radiant liner. Big brain was like, you know what? Everyone else is catching owls. At least the alchemist is farming, but. Now with this death, that's not true anymore. It's being out CS by Beyond even on the Wind Ranger. Yeah, I mean that's what happens when you have uh, a hero that's able to snowball, especially a support that's able to snowball so well top and CSJ. Uh -oh. This could be trip number three. Yeah, I think so. It is. The charge is not gonna get cancelled out by the Bramble Maze, but CSJ will still end up dead regardless. Dominating streak for <laughs> four zero one Venom Monster. <laughs> five <laughs> five minutes past five, baby. All right. Yeah, he's got an urn rolling out to him too. And this is what I thought with the Venom, right? Like, you just go, like, this Spirit Vessel build and maybe you get the Bongo boots or maybe you just get some stat items and you just kind of roll uh, around as this hero that's kind of just going to spit on people for a little bit. And then eventually when you get towards the mid-game, a lot of your cores are going to be able to carry the damage for you. Yeah. Kind of was in trouble, but yeah, this is this is the, the issue with the Timbersaw in the mid lane as well, right? He just gets to this point where he hides behind your Tier 1 tower and... What is a Willow and a Silencer supposed to do to him, right? Like, yeah, they can yeah. tickle him, but as long as Ice Ice is around in this mid lane, there's not much they can do to stop him from kind of just sitting underneath the T1 tower. Yep. Has the level six as well, so we have some available damage with the Chakram if needed. Everything going positive for Team Zero. So, Fluke, in the previous game, I remember Lacoste mentioned that the, the lineup drafted by Diaside needed to be at least 3k up by 10 minutes if they had any hope of winning the game. Fam, have you ever seen a team lose when they had a 4k gold lead at 6? No, especially not against an Alchemist. Like, usually when people talk about these Alchemist games, like, you have to have a little warped sense of, uh, of net worth. And the fact that they're up by 4k at 6 minutes is already good in a standard game, but it's amazing against an Alchemist, right? Obviously, he's, yeah. he's had his numbers changed a little bit, so it's not like, oh my god, you know, they're down by 15k, but... It's still down by an extra thousand plus gold um, in this game, and it's and it's and it's not going to get easier. Is the issue for them? Yeah, they're going to get some more levels on their supports, but Dark Willow needs to be one of those heroes that can kill people when she gets levels, and she's not going to be able to do that. Well, you know who can kill people? Ice Ice and CTY as they're killing CSJ. Uh, he does not get the bash. Ice Ice, oh my God! Ice Ice, press bash, buddy. Press bash. What happened? Oh no. Uh... Actually, you know what that happened? You know, you know what happened? You know what happened? CSJ's mm -hmm. had such an unlucky game. Something had to give. <laughs> so uh, this is Ice Frog saying, you know what, buddy? For, 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 for your efforts, for your troubles, here's some anti-bash check. You'll be okay. Yeah, and uh, that's his fourth trip back to Fountain now. Oh, um, my God. Two of them being 
are really bad. Like, they, this one's rough. Like, it's level 6 now on CTY. They can start pressuring this T1 tower. At least he's able to get some of the experience. I think maybe he got one of these creeps, but it's now oh, Ice no. Ice and CZQ are just making his life a living hell. CSJ just came back and he's at half HP on this Doombringer yep. right now. Already forced into tricking off the Scorched Earth. And they're just like, all right. And Ice Ice, he's just going to keep the train going. He's charging bottom now with the Spirit Breaker. And they're also moving in with 7e. E, the first rotation from the Timber Soul. So I think CZ is dead. They're going to jump him. Silencer. Oh. Need to get out, buddy. But unfortunately for them, uh, Ice Ice does cancel the charge. I'm actually not sure why. CZ trying to TP out right now. 7e e, trying to go on oh. top of him. And there's the bash from Ice Ice. <laughs> he was saving it for this moment here, Fluke. He gets the kill. This might set up for them to try and take away the tower from this Alchemist. Oh, man. Dota is such a funny game. It's such a funny little game. Sometimes you see me you're like, come on, I need a bash to get this kill. And you get really mad. You're like, come on, man, I didn't get any bashes. And then you walk in like that, and you first hit bash guy who's TPing out in front of you. Like, come on. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's so funny. It, it brings a smile to my face when you see stuff like that. It's obviously heartbreaking for TZ, but definitely feels good for Dota fans. And they're doing a good job. Um, to me, to, to really be able to continue this snowball going. Sometimes when you have this really early start, you can get kind of caught up in yourself and you mm. can overextend and you can start to feed behind some towers and maybe you give a bit of extra gold to like the mid laner who's doing okay. But they're doing a really good job, Team Zero, at just putting the pressure on when they need to. Yep. And they haven't suffered that much either in the opposite direction. Ice Ice charging through onto the Silencer and Silencer's falling low. 7e with the Chakram will be able to kill him off. Veno does die for this, but 7e might reward him for his efforts with some experience from an additional kill. And maybe they try to make it three here. Power Shot comes through and they have the damage fluke. Beyond literally ran headlong from the tier 2 tower in the bottom lane to make sure he's here in time. And by God, did he arrive just in time. Sakata is dead. 70s pressuring the mid tier one and big brain man if this is how this series is gonna go i don't think we'll be here for too much longer no the uh, the big brain is big sad right now this is this is not fun this is is not a good game of dota for them and unfortunately i don't think it gets any better like uh, 70 is playing timber bottom? so yeah you play bottom 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 oh no he's gonna stun himself oh no <laughs> the god king worst possible case scenario he ends up dead Stuns himself, the tower's fallen. Oh no, and it only gets worse because Tian Ming, or not Tian Ming, 7e rather, getting a kill onto Big Brain's Dark Willow. Tian Ming is in a very different team right now. My bad, bro. You're left similar characters. <laughs> I don't speak the language. Sometimes y your brain just goes to what it knows, right? right. I, well, man, they, it's they a kind of dead. All five heroes. It's a kind of dead? No, he's okay. Okay. Just. <sighs> I, I think they, they need to bring... I mean, they can't even really bring the Doom. I was going to say that they, they need to bring people into an area to punish any of this overextension, but CSJ is so far behind. doesn't even have Midas yet. He hasn't even skilled Doom. You have an Alchemist who doesn't want to be a part of these fights. You kind of have all the heroes that you can have in the same area, and it's just it's not going to be enough to kill 7e. He's level 9 now. He has a Vanguard. He's going to get Assange very, very quickly. And it just means that City Wise able to sit back and farm. It's hard to kill Ice Ice, but if they lose Ice Ice or ZZQ, they're like, ah, okay, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Mm. And it's just hard for them to, to get any of these kills because they need to, to start to defend their towers, but how can you defend against a Timber Sword that's literally unkillable? So let's compare and contrast the fortunes of these Team Zero heroes. You know, these CTY on his Terror Blade is not that far away from having Manta style. They're actually going to charge top onto CSJ, but... They just let him. They're just uh, scaring him off a little bit. But these heroes on Radiant side have nothing, dude. Click on Sakata quickly. Mm. This Void Spirit has less than nothing. He has power trades and a Sobi mask 12 minutes into a game of Dota. Of yeah, he has less net worth than ZZQ does, by the way, as well. And future. <laughs> so, <laughs> he's, yeah, he, he ain't having a good one. He is definitely not. Um, a Pavis now as well for, for the Venomancer. So he's, he's feeling good. Man, yeah, it's just, it, it's getting really, really hard. And, like, the Void Spirit needs to get Echo so he can have some of this damage to try and kill some of these heroes. And they've smoked towards the bottom side, so they want to try and get something out of this. I don't know can about this, kill beyond? I don't think they no, can. No, they can't. They don't have global. They can't kill this. He's level 9, dude. They're actually charging directly oh. onto Sakata. 
They miss with the Aether Remnant. Focus Fire has been triggered out. He's losing a lot of HP, though, but he does have a pretty big wand. He pops it, the charge arrives, and there's the right-click damage they need. They get the kill. Nether Strike onto TZ. It cancels the TP, and it says, my friend, I don't even have to be next to you to stop you from leaving. Two heroes mm. fall. Team Zero can do whatever the hell they want on the map. Bro, if you can dangle an offlane Windranger, have two heroes approach her, and both of them die, I think the game is the easiest you've ever played in your life. Yeah, I uh, I was just about to say, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be, uh, you know, too shocked if we saw a GG come out in the next couple of minutes. Uh, I think maybe if they lose God King, uh, maybe one or two more times, they could probably be thinking about it. It's 10k at 13 minutes in. Like, that is, that's a rough game. Like, a really rough game. Your Void Spirit is less than everybody on the enemy team. He's lower net worth than everybody. He's just died in every single engagement he's gone into. He's 0 2. He's not even close to an Echo Saver at this point. The oh. Venomancer's got two items on him. The Wind Ranger's getting close to a Glepnir. And as soon as the Glepnir comes, comes out, I don't think any Echo Saber's going to be able to save him. Yep. In the top lane, you have heroes like the Spirit Breaker, who is over leveled enough. Level 8 on the Spirit Breaker, relative to the level 5 on the Radiant Supports. Dare him to you know, do just something. Dare him to do something. Actually, mm -hmm. actually expect to be able to escape every fight alive. Actually expect to be able to escape every fight alive. To make matters worse, you mm. mentioned it earlier, oh, right? Boy. The fact that this lead is happening with an Alchemist. You mentioned it earlier, right? The fact that this lead is happening with an Alchemist. Bro, he just got his Radiance and the lead got bigger. Off the got That's always rough. I think if they if they yeah, get this wizard rune, they can definitely. Uh, I think if they if they get this wizard rune, they can definitely. Maybe it's either a dark lord uh, or the sixes pop up. up. Maybe it's either this a dark lord or the sixes pop up. This could be the game in the game. Speaking of silence, this could be the game in the game. There's going to be the first level of the game. They won't be able to get up. There's going to be the first level of the game. They won't be able to get up. They kill our beyond. So that is something. But that means that they kill our beyond. So that is something. And yes, the alchemist is beating down on the timber soul. And yes, the alchemist is beating down on the timber soul. And yes, the alchemist has now made his presence in this fight. No, CTY has now made his presence. ฉันไม่ได้ยินเสียงที่ดีมากที่สุดฉันไม่ได้ยินเสียงที่ดีมากที่สุดฉันไม่ได้ยินเสียงที่ดีมากที่สุดฉันไม่ได้ยินเสีย
Glide me or ride right now for this win. Glide me or ride now. Okay, I need to check. I need to check how fast this was. Okay, I need to check quickly. I want to go check how fast this was. I think it was like sixteen or seventeen thirty. Maybe sixteen or seventeen thirty. Maybe. And I mean, maybe we could do like an anti record for Cicada. Maybe we could do like an anti record for Cicada. All right, I'll check that. So this is the fourteen fastest. So this is the 14th okay. fastest light which is crazy all from the offlane on because all okay. the other ones were which is crazy mids. from the offlane because all Mizzle's the other ones were actually okay. so from the offlane this is so safe actually so from the offlane so they're definitely the fastest from the offlane and let's find out about this echo and let's find out about this echo he has the components but it hasn't been complete yet so it'll be completed by 20 or 20 he has the components but it hasn't been completed yet so it'll be completed in like 20 odd seconds 20 30 seconds like 19 minutes okay so that's like 20 odd seconds Yo, damn, there's actually been some crazy okay, slow yeah, echoes. There's actually been some okay, crazy slow echoes. Because, okay, they're I'm probably okay, catching, some random, because, probably, okay, catching some random but other weird games. Probably catching some random other patch weird where all of spirits are, uh, In this patch where all of Void Spirits are building the Echo Saber, this is like, definitely on the slow end. Four minutes slower than you arrived right but now. But not the slowest okay. overall. The slowest overall was 42 minutes by Laurel. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Well, we'll hold it. <clears throat> we'll sit there. So, I mean, four minutes slower is, is definitely not go check what you want. When one, that one, was one, 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 one of the lanes that I, was like I don't want to say it was going well, or but it definitely 30, wasn't going maybe? the worst. It, it was, was their so, best bombing and, lane. I mean, maybe um, we could do like an anti reinforcement to, 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 to get to an item to get an Probably would have been able to get some of these kills. So, this is the 14 fastest going. Okay, yo, damn, this oh, actually is though. So Speaking of gold, he's slow. The God King, the gold okay, merchant well, himself is about to end up dead. We'll Take it out okay, by the Yon and 7 and crew. CSJ, he jumped uh, in, but I don't know why. He's gonna actually just end up dead. Holding. Eternal Chains, Fault him up. Saber. He just this easily is... gets cleaned up. CTY, on the slow rolling way. four minutes slower than normal, but not the slowest okay. overall. The slowest overall was 42 minutes by Laurel. Oh, okay. Alright, 42. This seems a little <gasps> cap, but well, well, we'll hold it. <clears throat> we'll sit there. So, I mean, four minutes slower is, is definitely not you, what you want. When that was one of the lanes that I don't want to say it was going well, but it definitely wasn't going the worst. It was it was their mm. best performing lane, um, and he unfortunately just isn't able to to get to an item that probably would have enabled him to get some of these kills. And now that there's so much gold going, it's too hard to get killed. Oh, mid lane though. Speaking of gold, the back. God King, the gold merchant himself is about to end up dead. Taken out by Beyond and 7 and crew. Colonel James holds him up. He just easily gets cleaned up. CTY rolling forward. He wants the silencer. One more right click will secure his life. A double for the TB. Tier 2 tower about to fall as well. And they still are nowhere near having items to fight. Like, Bro, yeah. their mental fortitude on Big Brain right now, to still believe they have a chance in this game, they are on another level. I would have GG'd out so long ago, given these circumstances. Yeah, it's... Yeah, this this is definitely a, a game where you should have 100% said, uh, let's go game two um, a while oh, ago. no, bottom. Dude, Beyond and ZZQ can now just solo Sakara. It doesn't even take two cores anymore. Just one core and a support, that's all they need. Honestly, I don't even think ZZQ needed to be here. I think Beyond could have done it alone. Yep, definitely could have. So, yeah, this game is is looking rough, and you know the fact that you're playing up against a, a Midas Doom and an Alchemist, and you're almost uh, a thousand gold a minute ahead of the enemy oh team. My God. Um, this is this is a very good game number one here from Team Zero, and this was um, was about whether or not Team Zero was just going to be uh, a little bit too. So I don't think mm. the issue really much. I think the the way that they Uh, open a couple of minutes was uh, definitely a big factor. With the way there's definitely a uh, strong front runner. For Someone would have to do something genuine in this game to supplant ZZQ as potential MVP. <laughs> he might end up dead though, which is going to give away a hefty amount of gold. He's 6 0 and 11. Terrorizer is there onto him as well as 7 E. But onto the Simber. TZY is still at the start. No, no. Needs to throw it ASAP. But he's fallen so low. He's getting charged into. They have the way to kill him. And they'll bring him down. It's a double kill for Ice Ice. At the same time, 7E yeah, goes forward is. and runs down CSJ. It is a double for the Timber. It's a team fight victory. Fluke, <laughs> if a game ends where the enemy plus five is 6-0 and 15, <laughs> yeah, you've just gotten yourself shellacked.
Yeah, that, that was the definition of a game in Tia Shellac. And they finished 24,000 gold ahead of them at 21 Oof. minutes into the game. That was Oof. a very, very, very one-sided affair. And it all stemmed from the landing phase. I don't think um, their draft was too bad coming in for, from Big Brand. I'm not sitting there like, oh, I hate this. This isn't, is, this isn't that great. But I think the Venomancer really was an issue for them. Their, their offlane, um, I probably would say I didn't really like the Dark Willow all too much. Um, it is a good hero to try and play against the Spirit Breaker because we saw how good the Brambles were. But mm. ZZQ getting that... Um, the the opener at the rune um, up against CSJ, he got punished super hard for not having any region, and that was a massive issue for them going into that game. Was the fact that CSJ got brought down to like 100 HP, had to walk directly back to base. CTY got the opening um, full creep wave. They almost killed the Dark Willow, and then as, C as soon as CSJ comes back, ZZQ was just able to basically two v one in that lane, and Oof. with the Dark Willow and they are uh, and a doom. Um, I definitely feel like the Dark Willow should, should potentially be able to deal with the Venomancer, but, I mean, ZZQ, he set up that safe lane so well that CSJ never had a lane, and everybody else just did their bit. And, um, yeah, really good team play coming in from Team Zero. Not only did he set up the lane to ensure that they could deal with CSJ's Doom, he also made the rotation bottom to assassinate the Alchemist so that we'd have even less farm available for the Guard King. Uh, pretty much pixel-perfect performance at all quarters. The lag we just... There's too much kiting as well. When a game goes this badly, it's so hard for you to maintain your presence in this fight. And when we look at these heroes from Big Brain, we have Dark Willow, who has some degree of control. Silencer doesn't have control. Void Spirit doesn't really have control. CSJ didn't really get off to, you know, that Doom that has, like, Blink War Storm starting every fight. So they were wholly reliant on Sakata making things happen on this Void Spirit. And he had one of the roughest games of his entire life, so he couldn't do it for his team. And Big Brain, whew, a game to you forget. Store this outside of your Big Brain. Hopefully, it never comes up in your memory banks again as Team Zero made it look easy. Obviously, we're giving this one to ZZQ. Did everything mm. for the lineup. Involved in the most kills for his team. Didn't die a single time. Was there for every single engagement that needed to happen. Just... Perfect. Genuinely perfect. There's been a lot of fire Venom monsters we've seen lately. A lot of them fail to impress. Sometimes the hero feels extremely lackluster. Then you have a game like this and you're like, oh, okay, this is why all the teams have this guy on the radar as a potential mm -hmm. premier plus five hero. Yeah, he really does abuse a lot of these uh, melee heroes as well, and I think it could be a pretty good answer into the Doom. Um, we saw how rough his landing phase was uh, that time around. I think that was kind of a combination of a few things. But yeah, I mean, ZZQ, the, he got off to a rip roar of a start. And they're making that rotation towards bottom, as you said, right? They're just opening up the map, meaning that uh, Beyond and Ice Eyes got to, off to a little bit of a roll themselves. They weren't kind of dominating that lane um, by any stretch of the imagination. But that rotation from ZZQ, he lives, is the biggest yeah. part in a lot of those rotations and a lot of those fights. And he's just able to be a Venomancer and get a lot of experience. And that's a, a big thing this patch for a lot of these supports, especially supports like Venom and Spirit Breaker, is getting a lot of experience early, and that's what he got, and it was just, it was impossible for them to try and deal with. For context of how good this game was for the side of Team Zero, the game was so good that despite this, Venom Monster getting an early Spirit Vessel, which hard counters Doom and Alchemist, wasn't even really relevant. Didn't really even rise to the level of calling it to attention, because they were just rinsing every engagement they were part of anyway. After what we saw here in Game 1 and what we saw earlier in our prior series, we really should have a conversation about allowing us as spectators to throw in the towel, get, get a coach or something, man. <laughs> throw in the towel, save your players, and make sure that they don't have to deal with all this emotional damage from such rough, rough losses. It is only Game 1, though, and we have seen Fluke. Remember the other day, there was a series where a team lost awfully in one game, had a team talk, and came back even better for Game 3? So let's hope that uh, they have ROTK's number Give him a quick call. He's still a free agent. Get your team talk and come back stronger for game two. We'll see if they have what it takes on the side of Big Brain or if Team Zero really are just that team here in the division. we find out very shortly. Don't go anywhere. Some more Chinese Dota coming at you in just a few minutes.
Welcome one and all here to some Chinese Dota action. The DPC ends off the first week today in Div 2 as we witness a very fun series between the side here of Team Zero and Big Brain. And so far, Team Zero showing themselves to be not just the big dogs here in the Div 2, but honestly, somebody must have pissed them off because they were beating down Big Brain like they owed them money. So, Fluke, uh, uh, hopefully the money's been paid back. Hopefully all the beef has been squashed. And hopefully Big Brain are more competitive in the second game. Yeah, uh, uh, I hope Big Brain are able to, to bounce back after that uh, that first game because, I mean, it definitely wasn't pretty to watch, that's for sure. I mean, maybe if you're a Team Zero fan, you're super happy with how that's going, but uh, Big Brain, they can have to try and pull something out um, this time around, and it seems like they're in relatively good spirits. Like, you know, God King seems like he's having a pretty good time uh, with the right. game right now, so we'll have to, to wait and see whether or not that's going to translate into the game. Um, but Big Brain, been at the Pangalia this time around, so there are a, a few extra heroes that are floating around. Void Spirit is is one, Magnus is another one, even if they want to try and go for like a Medusa early. Um, this opener from Team Zero is a good answer to a potential Medusa, so mm. maybe they might be thinking over that right now. And you can see, you know, TZ is a little bit um, pensive about how he wants to go about this, about whether or not this is going to be the Medusa, like it seems like they had originally planned, or if they I want to try Smart. something else. Okay, so they're going to go Beast Master plus one here. Just go Probably be a Sansa. Medusa. Just go be a Medusa, dude. It's fine. It's chill. They've already yeah. banned Pangolier. Yes, they have Wind Ranger, but whatever. Ruby. And they go Rubik. Okay. I mean, they can just go Medusa now themselves on the side of Team yeah. Zero. Also, don't you love how Sakara and CSJ pretty much just had like uh, half of coins? Both of them just have half their body with a piece of their keyboard. It was a very nice <laughs> frame there. Uh, I Rubik, always Rubik, love Rubik. watching uh, how, how players frame themselves. Why didn't some, they choose Rubik? Are, are we stealing particular? it? Uh-huh. Yeah. Are um, we just stealing the Rubik from Ice Ice so that Team Zero doesn't play it? Maybe. Um, maybe they just didn't have the faith in the um, in the sponsor again. Um, it gives them a little bit more ways of of catching things obviously it's it's always generally just going to be a good hero like if you still sh shackle shot it's pretty insane um for, for rubik the fact they have no cast time and if you ever do latch people up you know the arcam supremacy is always um pretty good for you and, and all that kind of stuff and same with power shot it's um it's an insane spell to be able to steal for the rubik so mm. it is generally just going to be a comfort hero for a lot of uh pos four players um to fall back to the rubik it's like i don't hate it but i also don't love it at the same time you know yeah but yeah. For the last while, it feels like Ruby's just doing so. that hero. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, well, gotta deal with Medusa. CTY Medusa, just chilling. I'm honestly so surprised they didn't just go Beastmaster Medusa. Like, Wind Ranger can be scary with Diffusal, but I don't think so scary as to make Beastmaster Rubik better than Beastmaster Medusa. Yeah, I think maybe they could have potentially just been scared of being run over in their lanes again. Um is is one thing for them like the rubik beast master is a pretty good lane um you can pressure out the medusa a decent amount um but mm. if big brain um don't have stronger other lanes as well like if they you know they have their mid lane where cicada isn't able to dominate and they have another weak safe lane it can be pretty hard for them to try and play this game the, the way that they want to but the good thing is for them uh team zero they don't really have... I, I guess Dusa can kind of fill a, a similar role like the Terror Blade um, in the way that she comes online um, in the same kind of areas. But I think when you have the Terror Blade for Team Zero, it was just easy for them to say to him, all right, just sit back, farm for a little bit and just get like a Scardy plus one item and then we just take all the buildings and then it's impossible for them to fight. Us. Whereas Dusa, I feel like, can take a little bit more time. Well, one of the other heroes that we have seen being very effective against Medusa has been Shadow Demon, stealing away and getting some illusions from her. Her illusions are very, very strong. And just having Demonic Purge. Even if she goes into Stone Gaze, you Demonic Purge her, you can still take a fight thereafter. So definitely makes the most sense for this hero. Unfortunately, though, Shadow Demon and Rubik have an extremely large overlap with the roles that they perform in the game. So big brain. Gonna have to figure out a very smart way to integrate both of these heroes into this draft. Mm. And that's, you know, whenever I see supports, I, I, I kind of, I want to call them like an old support duo, you know, like when you see like 
Crystal Maiden plus Rubik. You see, like, Rubik plus Shadow Demon. Like, you see these two heroes that feel like they do relatively the same thing as a support duo. It, it never really feels good to me because you're kind of having both of these backline support heroes. Neither of them really want to initiate for you either. One of them's a save. The other one's kind of just stealing spells and being a bit of a nuisance on the side. Whereas for the side of Team Zero, if they go for Wind Ranger position four, she can start fights for them with a Shackle Shot on the side. They've got a Void Spirit now that's able to jump in and be able to start those fights. And you know, look along the lines of like a Techies or a Spirit Breaker, those heroes that are able to just kind of go in and do a little bit more than just being a backline support. Um, definitely feel a lot better, but Team Zero, I mean, I wouldn't hate for them to just go Mag, right? Like, they just go Mag, Void, Spirit, Medusa, and they just have those as their trike, or they have a position four Wind Ranger, and they just go for um, some very stock standard position five for them to, to play with the Void Spirit in lane, or even the Magnus. I would not hate that at all, actually, if we did get a Magnus. They go for the Enchantress, though, so okay. we're still keeping this Wind Ranger pick somewhat open, given that Beyond was the one that played it in the last game. Could still be him back on this once more. And we've often seen Enchantress as the option into teams that have Beastmaster. And generally, when you play Beastmaster plus Rubik, most of the times I've seen that duo, they play with the Call of the Wild. Like, they don't go for the Axis build, but yeah. might be forced into doing so this game to deal with this Enchantress. He definitely gonna have to try something a little bit different. Um, I think this time around, especially when it's probably gonna be Enchantress Medusa, which is a pretty spooky lane. Like Medusa is always just gonna get the the Mystic Stakes uh, spam out, and then you always have to deal with an Enchantress off the back of that. So yeah, I'm interested to see how that lane's gonna go. Shadow Demon TB lane um, is okay. I don't think it's uh, kind of crazy. It's not like um, you know some of these other heroes that have good combinations with the Shadow Demon. Um, mm. But the TB should be really to the okay in whatever lane he's going to get. The the Wind Ranger can't really pressure him at level six, um, because you know her her focus fire won't really do much. The high armor Terror Blade, so feels like Big Brain have shored up a lot of their um, their side lanes this time around. But it's just about how they want to play this mid lane. I guess they can kind of just get rid of some more of these heroes to go up against seven E. Wouldn't hate to see like a Monkey King ban. Um, I think would be pretty good here for. But for Team Zero, it's something that, yeah, that, that's the card has played in the past. Good into these melee heroes. Can be annoying for Medusa. Builds um, Diffusal Blade and just sits in the Wukongs. Makes it hard for, for them to try and kill him inside of that. Mm. It has been bad now. dealing with Wukongs. Not going to be on the cards for them. But Big Brain, they have to decide now where they believe Beyond is playing. If they think he's playing Wind Ranger, you ban another support. If you think it's still a little bit open, you could potentially ban another offlaner. And they believe it's either open or that Beyond Hero is coming at the end of the draft. So, Darkseer would have been phenomenal into the Terror Blade. So we want some decent laning prowess. I suppose Wind Ranger isn't too terrible as the primary laner, but honestly, I would like some beef. They don't really have somebody to stand on the front lines for them right now, so they need to pick that up in the draft. And they don't. Oh. They just go Lion. Just damage, baby. So we're just hurting people. We're just killing them off. Yeah, I, I think that... For me, that's a confidence pick. That, that just shows that Team Zero uh, are here to party. Um, I was thinking maybe they wanted to go Doom um, for for this game. Maybe Doom into the Shadow Demon would feel a little bad. But uh, being able to blink in and, and uh, just get the Doom on the Terror Blade feels good in a team fight. And you can always just uh, eat the Beast Master summons as well, right? But hmm. they want to go for the line. This time around, they want to have that extra bit of Disable here. That can kind of start fights for them. But I do agree with you. They don't really have a, a tanky frontliner. I guess they have Medusa, so they probably didn't really need that. Um, they just have a hero that whenever anybody gets close to Lion, they just go in and... Winter Wyvern? Is that a mid Bro, Wyvern? Bro, do? Wait, offlane boy, Medusa. Offlane Medusa. Offlane Medusa. Oh, yes, it is. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh. So you're talking about... As soon
um, to be able to make. And this is why we're seeing the, the the prevalence of a lot of these heroes, right? We talk about it ad nauseum in a lot of these Dota broadcasts is, is versatility for a lot of these heroes is very, very important. Like the, mm. the art of, of drafting has become such a fine science that a lot of teams are really clued on. You know, a few years in the past for tournaments, a lot of these teams really got caught out by some very basic drafting mistakes, whereas a lot of teams now have leveled up and be able to figure out a lot of that drafting theory. And, and that's why you have to have a lot of versatility to be able to pull out these uh, these random trump cards. And I mean, yeah. I like it for, from Team Zero. It's a, it's a nice little draft they've got here. Um, they're really going to have to rely on the, the Void Spirit and the Wind Ranger to have good starts, um, to be heroes that start fights for them. Um, mm. Because this Medusa is not just going to be the tanky frontliner that's just going to stand. She will be tanky, but she's not going to be like a Medusa that's sitting there and hitting a tower and they can't do anything about it when they have an Aegis on her at like 20 minutes, right? Certainly going to be a very entertaining experience. We're also going to be having this Winter Wyvern come in from Sakata. So that, honestly, with Sakata being there, that maybe also changes why they might want the Medusa to not be the safe laner. Winter's Curse is really no. terrible to deal with as Dusa, actually given that you're the one that's the anchor point in the middle of the fight. So it's really no. terrible to so deal with as Dusa, especially to see given that you're the one that's accomplish. the anchor point Another in the middle of the fight. Another interesting thing we have here... So, is CTY it'll be interesting on to see what Sakata is able to accomplish. We've been seeing more Another and more interesting of this thing hero we have here in a base of different CTY roles, but on the Wind Ranger. It's the first time I've seen her in a pro game more and more of this hero. Or what do we think? In a base of different is roles, but it's the first time I've seen her in a pro game going in safe lane. How she should build up. Or what do we think? Is is there any no, change up? Uh, I still given her increased priority in terms of how she should build up. The best item that hero can build full stop. I still think Klepni is the one thing that I could probably see is maybe you get like Manta style on this hero. The one thing that I could probably see is maybe. You get extra like a couple of illusions style. floating around. Maybe uh, you get like a Scotty at some point, uh, or like a Daedalus, and, and then go uh, extra couple damage. illusions floating around. Maybe but you get like yeah, a Scotty at some point, same. or like a Daedalus. Oh, and I'm gonna get themselves damage. first blood, big brain, mm. by but, bringing yeah, down high size. Team Zero are going to get themselves get first blood trouble brain. by bringing down and Ice funnily Ice. enough, TZ gets Team the kill Zero onto could TZ. Could not get him out of trouble on a Shadow Demon. And funnily enough, TZ gets the kill onto TZ on a Shadow Demon. TZ being the player, and then TZ being the abbreviation. Very weird to look at. TZ, never notice it being the player, now, and TZ being the abbreviation of TZ. Never notice it till now. Now I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna keep just staring. Just be glad at he's not on Team Zero <laughs> because then it'd be TZ TZ. <laughs> just be glad he's not on Team Zero because be then it'd be TZ TZ. That'd be the best way to do it. It's like when, when you've seen like some hilarious uh, teams of the past where they were like player names or player names. It's like when you've seen like some abbreviation of the past where they were like player names or player names plus certain people. The abbreviation mm -hmm. would be the player name, uh, just like player name on player name. Oh, the power almost had is... a dead Rubik, but the power shot uh, didn't connect. Bottom? Oof. Oh, oh, they almost had an unfortunate dead Rubik, but the power shot, shot didn't connect. Is that like 90 mm -hmm. health on oh, the Rubik? That's very unfortunate. He'd still, though, I suppose it's a proof of concept that, like, for Team Zero that... The Rubik? Still, though, I suppose it's a proof of concept for Team Zero that they have enough damage to really threaten these heroes. And CSJ also should watch himself. He's fairly far forward right now. Power shot is back online. A creep to try and Oh, she has attendance. Okay, I see why. Oh, she has attendance. Okay, I see why. One, she went attendance. She didn't go entry level one. She went attendance. Not under that much danger. So CSJ is actually not under that much danger. Yeah. Um, they just want to yeah. get these trades um, going. They just want to think get these trades going. Right? They didn't think, really uh, bring that much regen. They didn't really 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 just play around the window with those tenants, and now, those those and now they've got the little chicken. Um, this could um, be a bit of a rough go here for, for, for CSJ. Mm. But see how this is so going. This is going a lot better this time around. Right? Right? I think scenario, that's right? a big positive. Big positive for for the big brain. The big brain. These lanes aren't these lanes polluting out of control. For them, not really polluting out of control. Like in game one, they got the first blood. They're not going to crush like in a lot of positive game one. They got the first blood. And unfortunately so, for them, a lot of positive heroes aren't necessarily the most mobile on the map. And unfortunately for them, these master winter the heroes aren't necessarily the most mobile on the map. making big moves, but they prefer playing these with their big the entire Ivan. team. These heroes can start so making big moves, but they prefer Sakata playing with their big marshals the, the whole team. gang together. So that does mean that CSJ, you're on your own for a bit, buddy. the whole gang together. So that does mean that CSJ, you're on your own game one, so you should be fine. Yeah, he's actually been able to, to play the lane uh, a little bit more. Um, that definitely could be off the back of his support being just a little bit better um, than uh, what the Dark Lord was. I haven't really seen the prank over 
jump yet. Maybe we might see some Dark Willow oh, specialists yes, in game some other tournaments that are going on right now. Um, see if they're yeah, able to play her, but actually been able to yeah, play, not play the lane oh, a little no, bit good. more. Um, they definitely could be off the back of his support being just a little bit better um, than what the Dark Willow was. I haven't really seen the prowess of her just yet. Maybe we might see some Dark Willow specialists in, in some of the other tournaments that are going on right now. Um, see if they're able to play her, but definitely not good. Oh, no. Good Medusa dead. Medusa, Medusa. Okay, okay. Whew. She just barely Ice got off the magic wand. Ice Ice, though, might not be as lucky. One more Shadow Poison. Is three enough? It should be. Get the... Oh, okay, with four, you are super dead. Super, super, super dead. That's huge. Um, Would have been much better if they killed Beyond. But um, at the end of the day, he's basically no mana. Um, doesn't even have enough mana to Mystic Snake. So he, he's in a pretty rough spot. But ZZQ finally gets one back there onto the Rubik. Rubik ends up taking a tumble down bottom. The more important thing here is the fact that ZZQ doing all the skirmish activity with CSJ and the Rubik, but leaving CTY to his own devices and casually right-clicking away. The Swen Ranger is second on the map in terms of CS numbers. Number one is coming through the mid lane. So she gets closer towards this. Oh, no. And here's some more gold with the life of this Beastmaster. And they give it towards CTY to make sure he gets all the gold. And something I've noticed that they always do is Team Zero. Whenever possible, they'll leave you a life lingering for a second or two just to ensure CTY collect as much gold as possible. Mm. That was a, a good play there from ZZQ. Just constantly harassing CSJ. And then as soon as he took one misstep, chanted and, and went down. They didn't even have to use a shackle shot for that. So this lane has a decent amount of kill threat. And I think that really enabled them to, to be able to make this change with the wind range of the fact they have such a strong laner in the Enchantress. And Rubik is not going to be the best hero. Um, into this uh, into this support just because they just don't have that much damage to be able to do early on. And you can just see what ZZQ is doing, right? He gets oh, the Hurricane so to be able to bring CSJ back in from the Mortal Attack. Dude, all right, ZZQ, series MVP if they win this game. What a player. Top lane. Not going to be the best hero. The terror blade, um, but the God King has this, enough power uh, into this support bring down just because they first. don't have that much damage. ZZQ might yep, finally be overextended for once. Gets ZZQ dragged back doing, in right? with the Telekinesis. However, Wind Ranger going in onto the Rubik. They want to try and Dude, bring down right, the Grand ZZQ, Major series MVP they if they win this game. What a player. ZZQ top lane. will live. They're going onto the Terra Blade. CSJ cannot avenge him. But the God King has enough Enchantress. So she gets Nature's Attendance back online. So ZZQ might finally be overextended for once. They're actually going onto CSJ now. Oh my goodness. Wind Ranger going in onto the Rubik. They want to try and bring down the Grand Majors. ZZQ will get the skill. Who is this guy? ZZQ is just doing everything today. And the Enchantress. She gets Nature's Attendance back online. So she can just pop them. A bit of sustain a herself back up. They're actually going on to CSJ now. Oh my he's, goodness. He's Enchantress back up cooldown. Some impetus hits uh, come in. And CTY as, uh, you know, will the, get this the kill. For, Who is this guy? Um, ZZQ is just really doing just, everything he's today. He's outplayed them. He's yeah, always been in a better like position. He's always been able to trade. He's always been able to get close to damage than they've been. And he's really hard. I think he's spacing and positioning. Very happy that he's both guys on one today. Against CSJ as well as, you know, the position for the... Um, Probably looking Frank towards really Div 1. Just, he's just looking at his former them. comrades on the side of PSG LGD. He's always like, man, I'm good enough to be in that squad. He's been able to get more damage than I've <laughs> been in, and he's really owned this lane. He's definitely like, owning. Feeling very very showy that, that he's got the shots on one today. That's yep. exactly what Team Zero need um, ZZQ right going now. out of this tour, right? We, we, Probably we've looking towards Div 1. Broadcast, and a lot looking of at his well. former this comrades like, on the side of PSG LGD. I don't say you're like, man, I'm good enough to be in that squad. Let me show you. This is you like, <laughs> playing yourself in the form, right? Like a lot of people talk about yeah. naturally yeah. owning. Definitely um, showing that he's got the chops. And yeah, same, it's exactly what Team Zero need. Right? Like if you're able to play yourself in the form, and ZZQ just being able to this broadcast, and a lot of people have this and getting himself into better positions. I don't want to say you're auditioned for the TI qualifiers, but this is you like playing yourself in the form, right? Like, a lot of people talk about match yeah. fitness in um, regular Making sports, sure you're in form for TI qualifiers. Yeah, same, and same thing happens in Dota, right? Like, if in, you're able to just in play the yourself in the form and ZZQ, don't go well. just being able to also looking towards kind of see for through the Matrix and getting himself the into better positions in the so hard Sakata for CTY. Sakata forced to commit the Winter's Curse really, really, really just to protect himself because 7E was 100% going to jump him. With the Astral Spear, making negative. sure they're in form for TI yes. qualifiers. Oof, and so Shackle Shot won't latch, it, but in, they have Focus the Fire, they have Riot Licks, don't go well. and they also have the Beast Monsters Lash. For a well, bigger team I feel bad stretch. now. We will say, hey, yeah, yeah. CSJ is allowed so to play Dota. We were Winters premature curse, on that just call, to protect himself he because seven not allowed to play Dota this series. He's not with the Astral Spear. I think CSJ after this, he is so dead. Shackle Shot won't latch, but they have Focus Fire. I go watch some anime or 
go out for dinner or something. There's, this is, this is not a good day for him. Um, and now Aziz is level five, City is level six, and he's level four. Oof. Like he is so far behind when it comes to his net worth that, ah, oh, it's just, it's so rough. And being a, an offlaner in the in these patches, you're generally given kind of. Um, a centerpiece to a lot of these uh, to a lot of these drafts. Either you set up fights or you enable some of these heroes. And unfortunately for the Beastmaster, it's not going to happen this time around. In the mid lane, we are going to have a small skirmish happening here in the river. Ice Ice found some spells out onto Sakata. 70, not sure he has all what he needs to finish him off, but he's going to try for it. Going in onto Sakata, gets lifted back by the Rubik. He really wants this chase, though. Dissimilate, going to be up again in... Actually, he doesn't have it leveled. Misses the Aether Remnant. Astral Step not online just yet, so the kill doesn't happen. Ice Ice will indeed draw the attention of the supports, and they kill him off underneath the tier one. The 70 did not find a prize, and I'm not sure he'll find the Shadow Demon either. He will make the attempt, though. Misses another remnant. While this is happening, CTY is killing off the Beastmaster on the other side of the map. Unfortunately, though, the level of net worth he has, Beastmaster is just a support, so it's not that special when he dies, but it's very special when Beyond gets taken out. Finally, they've tried so many times in the top lane to kill Beyond, but this is the only time there's literally nobody to come help him, and they take advantage of it at long last for Big Brain. Yeah, good rotation from Sakata. He went up there, got a bit of regen, was able to get back uh, uh, up to a healthy stand, and then uh, just a little bit of chip damage coming in from, from God King meant that uh, Beyond was not in the, the right space to be able to survive that gank, but... Now we see that 7E is starting to put the pressure back onto this Terrorblade, who is having a pretty good game so far. 4.2k net worth. Obviously, not close to CTY, who's got a massive amount of kills in his bottom lane, 402. But mm. um, still doing pretty well for himself. This, this game is uh, going relatively even, but it's all about uh, getting as much net worth as you can before this uh, Team Zero ball kind of comes at your face. Like CTY, mm. he's going to get to the point where he'll take this tier one tower on the bottom side, he'll get his Maelstrom up, and then he'll kind of just run around the map and try and kill people. And that's where they're able to, to snowball pretty hard for, for Team Zero. Like Beyond's got his Phylactery now, 7E is getting close to um, parts of his Echo Saber, and that's when it all comes together for Team Zero. Whereas for um, Big Brain, they're still waiting for a few pieces of their puzzle to arrive. We need a lot of pieces. Still need to finish the Witchblade for the Winter Wyvern. We need some oh, items. Oh, wise so much trouble. Uh, nice chill, dude. One, rain, okay. one run, threw a Shackle Shot. That's the issue. They don't have any mobility with these heroes. Sakata performs a Winter's Curse onto this Void Spirit, but that's only to protect CSJ. 7E himself is under no real threat of dying here with a Solitary Step in the Astral available. Still kind of surprised he hasn't put any, not even the value points into Dissimulate, but he's sticking around here. Maybe trying to hog some experience, but dude, TZ is going to throw his poison at you, so you got to get out. Yeah, they, they saw the uh, the stacks as well and wanted to try and yoink some of them. Uh, but unfortunately for 7, he wasn't able to do that. TTY potentially could have come close to the area and maybe tried to deal with it, but um, he was he was not close enough. Also, not being able to get a long-range snipe with the, uh, the power shot, the fact that it's only level 1 um, means that it's a little hard for them. So also it's CTY. CTY is an old school Chinese carry player. It's not 30 sure. minutes, man. Don't even look at me. I'm not even on the team right now. I'm playing PvE donor at that point. Uh, I already hate creeps. There's too many creeps in my bottom lane, brother. Yep. They keep spawning for some reason. I don't know how to get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mid lane. We'll have a small contest around this tier one tower. Team Zero though have beyond here and they have a siege wagon, so they should be able to claim it. He attempted a deny, would have been pretty cool from Sakata, but Beyond is the one that gets the tower. He also ports back north, so he can defend the tier one from an encroaching push from the God King. The way that they're controlling the map, for me, is even more impressive than how they've handled the lanes. Team Zero just uh, giving us a master class on how to play Dota from an advantageous position. Yeah, I think they're doing a really good job at um, just getting the right objective at the right time, and Big Brain... They, they're getting some trades by being able to pressure out 7e, um, but I would like to see them turn this into some more objective pressure. Maybe they kind of group up as, as three to four heroes to take one of these T1 towers, preferentially the, the bottom T1 tower, so it just enables uh, CSJ a little bit more. Um, mm. But yeah, they just haven't been able to put that pressure uh -oh. because they are still really far behind. Poor Rubik. Oh, actually, lucky Rubik. How did that not okay. latch behind him? Okay. I don't know what happened to this tree just here. It looks like it got cut down earlier. It might have even been a power shot that cut. That would be really funny. Whatever happened, 
does mean that the Rubik doesn't die here. However, the Shadow Demon might not be as lucky as now that 7E is here. They not only have damage, but they have reach. They extend it onto this hero. Sakara coming in, has Winter's Curse, hoping to catch 7E and CTY, but he's just too far away. Might just have to settle for ZZQ's life. They should have enough damage for this. Aether Remnant thrown out. This time around, Rubik will get lashed, but they don't catch up to him in time. So he does throw out the Telekinesis. Nobody from the side of Team Zero ends up dead. That is a big, big problem for Sakara because he's wasted a lot of time here, Fluke, moving around mm. but not actually catching any of these heroes. Yeah, that's the one issue uh, that I have with this uh, Winter Wyvern as a, as a mid, is you need a, a lot of lockdown around her to be able to enable her to get a lot of this damage down. But they they have Raw, but CSJ is in no way, shape, or form ready to try and fight. They've got Disruption, which doesn't help you because you can't do your damage while the, uh, the sun is going. And then you've got Telekinesis, which is relatively low. So it is hard for the, the Winter Wyvern to actually be able to play this game and you know, being a universal here, it's always a big check in my book, but yep. you have to try and survive here. Ouch. Oh, okay. Well, Bye. first zap of the game, some bonus damage for Ice Ice. Also, I love the Team Zero patience on that play, right? Because they smoke up. Beyond actually caught a glimpse of where TZ was, but instead of making a call to run directly to the Shadow Demon, they're like, no, 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 no. We want the Winter Wyvern. We will be able to find him. We wrap all the way around, and we first get down the ward before we make the jump, even though Ice Ice had his smoke broken. Very good patience. It pays off. And Winter Ivan, even further away from having the Witchblade for this game. Yeah, it's uh, kind of feeling like game number one all over again, right, for uh, for Cicada. Has a very key item they need to get. Hasn't been able to land it, but maybe they get... Okay, they, they get the free kill there on a ZZQ, so... His first death in two games. Um, <laughs> and kind of just being a nuisance in that bottom side. His first death across two games. That's kind yeah. of nuts to think about. So what? what's his combined score player. then? What's his score right now? He's 3-1-3, and three, right? So his combined score three. is 9-1-18 uh, and 18 in this series. Yeah. Not bad. It was pretty good. Um, yeah. yeah, but I combined that on a, an Enchantress and a, and a Venom answer. I think uh, a lot of people who were playing their pubs today would have been very, very happy, especially a lot of the five players would be very happy. Yeah. But this is where it starts... Uh, getting to the point where a lot of these items are kind of going to be able to balloon the start for them, right? You know, 7E, he's got his Echo Saber running out, so that's a lot of damage that's coming in for him. They've got the drums online for ZZQ. CTY is going to have a Lincoln Sphere and a few hundred gold. Beyond is building like a carry. So it has the oh, no. Beyond, Beyond and them, no, they're God going King. on to God King. God King dies too fast. Oh, my <gasps> God, what a save! Winter's curse coming in from Sakata. They get off the Thunder from the God King. He stays alive. Disruption onto Beyond. We spoke about it in the draft. How annoying it can be for Dusa. She just has to TP out. And Sakara, what a god. They smoked up with TZ. God King was dangling, right? And honestly, I didn't think they'd get there in time to save him. Sakara just pitched up with Blade. It was so, so close, Fluke, but it ends up being great for them. And now he might also get a kill onto Ice Ice. Beautiful body blocks, preventing the TI winner from escaping up the ramp. And that leads Sakara into another kill for the Winter Wyvern. Oh my god, if the game ends up being in favor of Big Brain, that's the play that changed it. Yeah, that was sick. Um, I was just about to touch on the fact that uh, God King hasn't been touched on the Terror Blade, right? Like, he had a pretty good lane. Um, he was able to sit back and farm. He's got Diffuser Blade up as well. He's got uh, his Dragon Lance. Now he's going to be going in towards the Halberd. Um, Halberd? For him, so... Yeah, I feel like he's probably going to be doing what he's known for, right? Like, maybe a bit of just splashy... You can't disassemble because it has a recipe, right? So... Mm. Okay. Well, I mean, you are not, it, it you're just... not incorrect that the God King is known for these off-kill to off item builds, so... Mm. <laughs> Average size, That's what I'm thinking. It's like, it's like what, is, what is God King cooking this time around? Like, has he found something that's broken again? It's easy. His life is going to get broken, unfortunately, as he eats a long-range impetus shot coming in from ZZQ. Who uh, adds another to the tally. He has now 20 combined kills. No, 10 combined kills, not 20. 10, 10, 10. Sorry, my bad, my bad. Oh, not bad. Oh, Put his enchantress across the CSJ. series. Down bottom, CSJ. Well, CTY is saying, hey, man, uh, my tier one tower is still alive, so your laning phase is not over. I can still bully you if you step even one foot wrong. And then how many deaths does he have? This is fifth death in the second game. Oof. He's got Midas, so 
He can catch up if this game goes later. Um, minus. But it, it's always it's always very depressing when your offlaner has a minus and they're not playing Doom. You're like, you're like, come on, man. <laughs> like, what, what is happening? Which is more depressing, Bounty or Midas or Beastmaster Midas? Oh, uh, the Bounty one baffles me, but the the Beastmaster one is pure depression because you're like, he just did not have a game. Like, just not yeah. a game at all. That you're thinking, I need Midas to catch up instead of I get some auras and feel strong. Radiant are scanning. Throughout the history of Dota 2, Midas has only been bought 10 times on Beastmaster. Very, very rare. Mid lane? <sighs> oh, no. Look at this. Guess Didier what they found? It's the God King, the DD on 7e. But they don't actually want to take this fight just yet. They're afraid of where the Winter Wyvern is. Without Vision of Sakata, he's demonstrated up on top how dangerous he could be. Honestly, He's very lucky because they could have jumped and killed the God King without him. They will zap instead onto the Shadow Demon, but Sakara, yet again, proving some value. Cold Embrace not only keeps TZ alive, it prevents the bonus damage for the Lion. Disruption will be there as well. Winter's Curse does come out. Sakara and crew, do they have what it takes? There's a Stone Gaze out from beyond, but it's not going to be good enough. They kill off this Void Spirit. And Sakara, okay, both on top and now, not only with him being in the fight, but just simply his presence of not knowing where he is, changing how Team Zero are playing Dota right now and giving a better opportunity for Big Brain. Yeah, Sakata's doing a really good job at uh, keeping him in this fight. One big thing is CTY was not uh, at that engagement. He did just have his uh, Lincoln Sphere being picked up. Uh, then maybe it might turn their favors. Uh, CCQ, very far forward. I, I know you've had a good series, my friend, but maybe not that good. Beyond is also now on the high ground. Ice Ice, Ice. blinks in. Doesn't have access to the ultimate. The hell is happening oh. from Team Zero? Ice Ice will die. There's going to be a focus fire coming in onto the God King. But CTY misses with the Shackle Shot. So they have no way to lock him down for the additional damage. 7e thinking about jumping in. He finds Sakata here, dragging him back in. Nice little save from TZ. TZ has been on point in this fight. Shackle Shot won't latch. Do they have the damage to find this kill? Not just yet. They turn onto the Medusa. Primal Roar comes out from CSJ at long last. And that enables them to kill off beyond. The Aether Remnants will be thrown in to buy some time by 7e. They catch it out onto the God King. But God King still very, very strong in this fight. 7e now turning his attention towards the Rubik, but he doesn't die either. TZ saves him too with the Dissimulate, and he's still alive. 7e is back out in the fight. Sakata is not dead, he's still alive. Throws a Winter's Curse onto Ice Eyes, keeping himself up. The Medusa is already gone, and now the God King feeling hella strong. He does get shackled though. CTY going in with the Focus Fire, trying to bring down this Terror Blade, who's falling lower and lower. He's in front of the Tier 2, he throws in the Thunder, but he's still gonna die. What the hell is this fight? CSJ now loses his life to 7e, and that's gonna be a triple kill for the Void Spirit. When all is said and done here, Fluke, eight heroes find themselves involved and losing their lives around this mid lane. But the fight still ends in pretty much the same position that it started. That was the weirdest engagement I'd watched in a long time. I, I thought, I honestly thought that was Team Zero running into their deaths. I thought they were like, I was like, oh no, this is save a mate syndrome, right? They're just constantly running in and feeding and just dying. And this is just where it's going to balloon out of control for Big Brain. But they, they, they just really pushed their limits. And a lot of their heroes, they were able to, to get some some clutch pick-offs, were able to get a, a few clutch saves. The fact that 7e was having that fight with TZ, um, was still able to win it before he do, uh, um, eventually gets out after some of the Shadow Poison stacks do go down. Mm. Means they're able to just drag out that fight long enough um, that they're eventually able to get the kills. CTY as well as uh, 7e were able to stay alive throughout the entirety of that, and, and that's massive for them. These Universal heroes are really going to start to get to the point where they're going to hit extremely hard. And they're doing a really great job right now at being hard to deal with um, is the biggest thing for me. And just not having the damage to kill them. Yep. CTY, you got to be careful, buddy. <laughs> uh, oh, not good. Uh, no, no. Seven, they can't kill it. Oh, they actually have to go that's... back to base. Yeah, they have to oh. go back to base. Feels bad, mate. Oh, yikes. It happens. To be fair, you know, fortunately for them, the first shards that they would get aren't game-breaking, you know? Lion Shard. Yeah. The only thing that reason you want Lion Shard is for TB, but End Shard, meh, whatever. Not that great. It's fine. Yeah, the, the, the double shard, is good. Yeah, I, I think End Shard would be okay with little friends. Um, 
just just to be able to to kind of throw it out onto the the beast master. He isn't going like a um, home of the overlord, so it's not like um, you're going to get like a big ancient creep punching him in the face. But still means that a, a few things are going to be able to um, turn around. But ice ice, oh man, super dead, super He's super, super dead. dead. Yeah. That's an Aghanim Scepter out on Sakara as well with the Switchblade. An obscene amount of damage coming in. We're almost fully online. We just need a little, one more like stat item to help him out in the mana department. Then we will have a proper core Winter Wyvern. Down bottom, ZZQ gets caught and ZZQ is a very, very dead. They should have given yep. that kill to CSJ though. CSJ deserves every kill thrown onto a ZZQ. From what he's experienced in this series, he needs his revenge, man. <laughs> Yeah, I think he's just happy that uh, this game isn't over at uh, 23 minutes. So, um, still being able to, to be in the fight. So, he's getting to the point now where uh, Team Zero, yeah, they're ahead by um, 5,000 gold. But they still need to start winning these team fights. And as you said, Sakata's becoming a problem. He's becoming very, very scary and hard to deal with. They need to catch him out. Yep. Speaking of Sakata, he has a Winter's Curse out on the top side of the map. They really want to kill off CTY. They want this Wind Ranger, and they are going to get her. Sakata's now on a mega kill streak, and they might get more. Disruption went in. 7e, though, finds the Shadow Demon. The Zap will be there from Ice Ice, but yet again, Sakata delays the inevitable long enough that they kill off the Lion. Terrorblade here as well now with the Metamorphosis. And ZZQ, no Force Staff available. Aether Remnant, they'll try to keep him alive. It'll hold off Sakata for a while, but with the Rubik being there with the lift back and the Zap, even steals the kill away. They ensure that they win the top five. Three for one. Sakata involved yet again. And Big Brain have now shaved the gold lead to only 2k. And after they take this tier one tower, it might even be just back to even parity here, Flu. Yeah, this is uh, becoming a big issue now for, for Team Zero. They just don't have what they need to try and deal with Sakata. He's done a really, really good job at just keeping himself in these uh, side positions, right? Over the trees and, and out of sight. And. Whenever they're able to pop the Lincolns on the CTY, he's just free food. Even if the Winter's Curse doesn't have many people around, they just set up enough for him to be able to deal the damage. And this is why this uh, core cool Winter Wyvern can be very, very scary. And Lincolns are very, very important because if you get that Winter's Curse out, you can still deal full damage to people. And it mm. is just a, a straight up stun. And definitely feels pretty good right now for big brain fans in chat. The fact that God King's doing well and Sakata are doing well. Yeah, CSJ, he's starting to get his farm. So now he's got Blink as well as a Crimson Guard. So he's caught up. You know, he's, he's just behind 7e, who, for some reason, these Void Spirits are really struggling in this series. Yep. Not sure why that is. We're having some balance brought to the Dota world. Initially, these heroes were too strong, so today they are experiencing some degree of humility. But he does have a Manta style now, though, so he has Manta with the Echo. Still feeling a very, very strong. And with the Aghanim Scepter just picked up by a CTY, Team Zero actually have just hit a little bit of a timing. The only thing they lack is defensive itemization. So in that window, though, we might see an offense being mounted by a big brain as they smoke up with three. They're heading to the top side of the map. The God King is already here. Beastmaster's already here. The rest of the heroes trailing in. And they do not have a mobility item just yet on the Shadow Demon, but they do have it on the Rubik. And we know just how powerful Blink Lips can be in the game of Dota 2. Mm. Also, Blink Hex could be very, very spooky if Sakata gets found out. I think that's going to be uh, a big point for both of these two teams. What happens to Sakata? Does he get mm. Blink Hexed? Does he get a good Winter's Curse off? Let's see what's going to happen. ZZQ, he's the first one caught right next to the Terror Blade. But they will be able to interrupt this for now. In the meantime, we will find TZ on the back edge of the fight. The Shadow Demon falling very low. He did drop down the Demonic Purge before he died with the Stone Gaze being thrown in by Beyond no to reveal. make sure nobody can come. There's no reveal. There's no sentries. There's no gem. 7e eventually jumps in to find the kill. Beyond, though, losing HP. The Blink from Rubik lifting back the Medusa, enabling the God King to finish him off. 7e e is in the middle of so many heroes all by his lonesome right now. He needs some assistance. He doesn't have to simulate to Astral Step. And therefore, it doesn't have a life. It's a double kill for the God King. The Terror Blade getting two cores, and now the path to Roshan is open. Fluke, is this the turnaround? The whole game feels like it's going all big brain at the moment. 
Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, we, we saw CTY, he did a good job at just getting on top of Sakata. Um, forced him to winch his curse him in a poor position, didn't get extra damage out. But Sakata rejoined the fight, CTY didn't. CTY was hitting creeps in the dire jungle. There, there was, I don't know, maybe there was a, a, a leave call, maybe there was uh, something else from a lack of communication between, you know, him and CTY. And to me, I, I'm not sure if I'm 100% sold on um, beyond building a Manta style. I think maybe they thought with how the game was going that they wanted an extra physical damage carry, but him not having that early um, agonims meant that a lot of their team fights really didn't feel that great. And when you're playing this offlane Medusa, I much prefer when you go for these items that just make you a little bit tankier. If you wanted to get like a damage item, build a Scardi. Um, just build an item that allows you to stick in these fights and just have a bigger mana pool because that's kind of the point of this uh, offlane Medusa is you just want to be this big beef. Bot King coming to fruition because he's standing there eating damage and you're like, why are they not hitting him? Then you're like, by the way, he has a halberd. Mm. By the way, he bought Heaven's halberd. Nobody on the enemy team has, a, there's no Bloodthorn, there's no Reverence Brooch, there's no MKB, none of that stuff. Yeah. So he's just eating all the damage, and now CTY might eat more than he can chew down you, bottom, you, forced to try and run away, himself brother. away. He's trying to TP out right now. Can he get out? Mike, what? Dude, CTY is actually a genius. All right. Who needs to know about the new... <laughs>
I mean, you're playing Lion. You already have Blink four stuff. You don't actually need more items, so who cares? But it does matter unless CTY... Dude, CTY is actually a madman. He's not TPing out right now. He's just chilling. He's waiting for these heroes to leave. And he's gonna just carry on farming. Who is this guy, dude? What a player. Yeah, I think he was hoping for maybe a straggler to, to come towards the top side because, you know, playing around his vision means that if anybody comes not within earshot uh, of one of those heroes, he could definitely punish them. But they're gonna sit back and farm. They're probably gonna lose their Tutu Tower in the top lane as well. With your Lion Dead, you probably don't want to have these fights going, but uh, Seventy is able to clear out some of the Ancient Camps. He's got a gem now as well, playing these side lanes and um, Big Raid. They really just kind of want to try and uh, put their presence and try and force a full 5v5, because if they can force a fight on their terms, it doesn't matter if they're AK behind just because of the Winter Wyvern, right? Like, she is such a turret in the background, and the Winter Curse is such a scary ability for them to go into that it is going to be very, very hard for Team Zero to get a fight going if they don't find, I would say, the Winter Wyvern first and kind of stun mm. her and blow her up. All right now, Big Brain, with this Winter Wyvern, going to be stealing away a Tormentor, so we have an Aghanim Shard taken. Uh, that's a pretty big one. Demonic Cleanse in this game does feel pretty, pretty legit. So they get got themselves a little bit stronger. Still contending with an 8k gold lead. However, they are able to take away the tier 2 tower down in the top lane. An intriguing game of Dota that we still have to be played out here. Mm. As they can still get a lot stronger on the Dire side. Radiant side feels like they've turned a corner. 70 has Lincoln's Echo and Manta. Suddenly much harder to kill on this Void Spirit. And once he gets the Nullifier as well, can also play offensively. Oh, he's in lost trouble. Uh, let's see. Can Rubik... Catch up, four yep. stops there, there's the lift. We have to simulate again in three seconds. Another Astral Steps charge. Oh, nice Sakata. He's chilled. They found Sakata. Oh my god, how did they find Sakata? Holy oh. smokes, while the rest of the team is distracted, Sakata gets picked off by CTY and the gang. Oh no, that is a pretty big deal. They're smoking yeah. to come fight this. I don't know about this, Luke. That's a magician's sleight of hand, that one, where Seven Ace is like, I'm all an illusion and they get the real prize in Sakata. They're probably going to lose this EQ because this... Maybe not. CSJ. They have a lot of first offs right now. He gets forced off back into safety. Shackle Shot catches TSJ before he can Primal Roar. And now that leaves them trying to catch out the kill Rubik. Disruption will be there to save him. I must say, TZ has been on point this game with that spell. Unfortunately, though, Seven E still has charges on the Astral Step. So he'll finish off the assassination attempt. And this will open up the Tier 2 tower. If they want to sit here, Creep Wave is a little bit further back. So they're going to rather take the Tier 2 in the top lane, come back later for the Tier 2 in the mid. Yeah. Looks like they want to try and get a fight going. They found the real TB. Oh, they got the God King. Shackle Shot was there. TZ yet again on point with the uh, Salvation attempt. There's going to be the jump in from this lion. Do they have what he it can. takes? Can they get off the Thunder? Cold Embrace, that's actually preventing Thunder. Sakata, what have you done? Okay, he buys space and time with the Winter's Curse, throws it in onto the Lion. Shackle Shot will be there, latching him to another creep. Beyond throws in the Stone Gaze, breaking up the fight as he's in the middle of all of it, stounding up several heroes. Sakata now gets zapped down by the Lion, does have buyback. CSJ losing out on his life as well with all these right clicks. TZ will fare no better. And now God King, maybe this time they finally caught him. But he does get forced off into the base by this Rubik. That means he has no forced off left for himself. Gonna get caught out, hexed out, killed off, and Team Zero, they don't get their big prize, but in some sense here, Fluke, they might have gotten even more. Yeah, uh, Team Zero are, are just outplaying them. Um, to, to put it simply, I think the, the way that they're playing these fights, the way that they're forcing out these spells, they're not getting themselves clumped up, they're, you know, just, just making this game so hard for Big Brain. Like, they have to play so immaculately in these team fights when they get caught out that it is hard for them to play. Oh, Sakata, he bought back, man. Oh, no, Sakata just bought back. There's a shackle oh, shot. Dead. He's caught and killed. 90 seconds, no buyback. The God King is dead as well without buyback. And oh, that's it. God. GG, well played as called. They throw in the towel. Team Zero get the 2-0 and show us right now that probably they are the team to beat within the Chinese region. What a clean performance coming out of them, Flu.
Oh, that was oh, that's a depressing way to lose that game, man. They were in control. They like, oh, they had oh, they had that game. I'm actually I'm so heartbroken. Um, yeah, yeah Sakana got caught out in the mid lane. Yeah. Then they ran back in, and then God King yeah. got caught, and then it was a fight over God King. Ah, oh, yeah, that's yeah, that's a heartbreaker. Like this fight here was was where I was like, okay, this is where it's uh, starting to look good. Um, for the side of Big Brain because there was a, a few issues with where these fights were going um, for Team Zero, but you can see that early on here when they just didn't have those extra couple of items, um, that the way mm. that they were playing was getting punished a little bit too oh, much from Big Brain. They did game, a very, very similar thing um, to be able they, to end like, the game, and that's how they were able to play. They played on the bleeding edge for a lot of their heroes and I'm were so able to just kind of make it so all the spells coming out from Big Brain... Um, yeah, yeah, they so had to make the perfect out decision in, the in half a second. Yeah. Then they, you know, like in like a split second, they had to make a perfect King decision to win that fight. And then it was a fight. And it just wasn't able to work King. out there for Big Brain. And oh, yeah, yeah, that was that was so close. There, yeah, we're almost going to a third. Like, that was so close. But yes. I mean, Team Zero like, showed okay, why they've got you know, Ti uh, winners and a lot of experience on that roster for the side of Big Brain because there was a few issues with where these fights were going for Team Zero. But you can see that early on here when they just didn't have those. One of the reasons I feel really bad for Big Brain is, like you say. Not only were they winning the game, but the comeback from after such a rough game one, they're getting mm. demolished in game one. Game two looks so much better. You're like, oh, okay. This is going to be boy. If they win this game, maybe they're also buoyed emotionally, and that makes the third game easier. But just us, it just, I don't know why it didn't even work out, man. Though that last two, three fights, because here, we're looking at this, right? 23 minutes in. Honestly, I'm thinking with guarantee the game three. They're mm. soon going to have an Aegis not long after this. They took a very good fight here. Sakara is going absolutely ham in these engagements. This Rubik is just never dying. TZ is saving absolutely everybody. Like the execution was also there coming in from the side of Big Brain. That's what makes it even more sad that this is what ends up happening at the very end. You know, game one, nobody was able to play Dota. Game two, everybody had a good game and it still wasn't enough. And uh, moments like this definitely do not help. The God King is just not allowed to get caught. This, this just yeah. can't happen. Like, in this game, you know, in retrospect, he bought this Orchid. Uh, somebody in the team should have been like, bro, you don't want, you're gonna play this game without Lincolns, without Manta, without BKB, zero yeah. defensive items on Terrorblade? Are you sure, buddy? Yeah, that, that's why I was, you know, talking about the fact that maybe Scotty was the route that he wanted to go. Um, to just try and be a little bit tankier because in a lot of these fights, it was hard to kill him. Um, and it still was pretty hard for them to kill him that time around, but it's just, you know, when you're getting Gordon like that, Orca does literally nothing for you. Yeah, he silences CTY in some of these scenarios, but that's it, right? Like, it, it's very, very hard for them to play that game um, with how advanced God King was, but this is kind of my issue with this call Winter Wyvern as well, right? It, you, like, if your game can crumble so fast. Like, you just have one bad Winter's Curse. Like, you're just not in position one time, or maybe you misuse Cold Embrace. Like, it just... This hero can be so, so strong, and then in a moment's notice, completely crumble and look like it, it shouldn't have been in the game. But I think yeah. Team Zero really... Uh, show that they've got the chops this time around um, to be able to put themselves in a very good standing at the end of this tour and even make a splash in Division 1. I think special shout-out to to Beyond. He kind of just played almost a, a carry Medusa that didn't really have to do much. There was a couple of moments where he got some good stone gazes, but this game for Beyond, it was, you know, he got carried by, by the rest of his team. He played immaculately. The entirety of Team Zero across both games got carried by ZZQ, though, who yeah, true. absolutely needs to take MVP for both Game 1 and Game 2, the entire damn series. Hell, give him the day's MVP if we have yep. a more screen like that, because it's it's beyond reckoning how, how much impact he had. Game 1, obviously, on the Venom Monster. Game 2, really clutch kills with the Enchantress, but making sure he's always moving across the map at the right moment getting some phenomenal vision, the early gem pickup, giving them some more map control, the amount of four-star saves that came out of this guy, as well as playing aggressively with the four-star several times, pushing in the hero that got disrupted by TZ into the fray so his team could clean them up. It, I, I don't even know what to say. CZQ, <laughs> shout out to this guy. Uh, unfortunate mm. that he's not back in Div 1 with YBB, but here in Div 2, certainly lighting the entire division of Flame right now and looking so clean. So Team Zero, 2-0 up right now. It is a regrettable experience uh, for their enemy, but 
what can you do? You're playing up against TI winners, so you should expect to suffer some knockbacks and some setbacks. But for Big Brain, it's only their first loss. One loss is not enough to guarantee that you can't get into Div 1, so they still have a lot of time to play for. And like you mentioned earlier, all of this is about the TI qualifiers anyway, mm. so they could also still play themselves into better form down the stretch. And honestly, Fluke, maybe you do need some extremely difficult games here in Div 2 before you play qualifier games in, for TI against Div 1 opposition. Get crushed mm. a little bit, know what it feels like, and then learn and develop from here. Yeah, and I, and I think, um, obviously, you know, you, you learn a lot from your losses, and I think uh, this time around, Big Brain probably learned a lot from um, their games. Maybe you don't learn all too much from game number one, to be perfectly honest. I think that was... I think they kind of just got outlined um, super, super hard. But game two, you definitely can learn a lot, right? Like, how did they lose that game? What should they have done when it comes to their mm. positioning and the standing and all that kind of stuff with their macro movements, blah, 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 blah. And that could be a pretty big thing for Big Brain moving forward because they've definitely got the skill on their roster. I, I don't think they got just kind of outskilled in every single one of the uh, positions this time around, especially that game number two. They kind of just got out macroed and out moved. So they have yep. a, uh, a lot of stuff uh, going for them this time around, but you go up against Team Zero, who I feel like like, they're my pick to be able to, to easily get out of uh, this tour going forward, and I think they showed it today. Well, Team Zero will be in action again on our next broadcast day as they'll be taking on Invictus Gaming Vitality. A bit of a reward for having a good game here. You get to take on a team that's not looking so hot, so hopefully that gets them some easy points on the board. Then, of course, we start that day off with Team Dissolution taking off Supernova. Supernova mm -hmm. today fell earlier on regrettable for them but they'll be looking for revenge make sure that they can find themselves in a winning position and of course team dissolution one and two so far have been struggling a little bit in the dpc they also want to make a bigger splash of course those games will be happening in our next broadcast day about 48 hours from now so make sure that you are here with us on the pgl channel to witness that day of dota uh, we also have to remember that as we witness all of these games div one teams teams that are at dream league everybody's watching all the dota that's happening because we're all aware that there's some new idea. Whatever team wins CI, it's going to come from some random idea that they caught in some random game. They implemented it in their own game, in their own team, and that gave them the necessary legs to go deep into the CI tournament. So right now, it's CI season. It's all about that big international tournament. Can't wait to see what the qualifiers look like and to see what the games look like at the big extravaganza. With that, though, Brother Fluke, we are done for the day. That means we're all going to be saying goodbye. So everybody at home, thanks for joining us for these last few hours of Dota 2 action. Please make sure that 